Excellencies, honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, may I now commend the program and welcome you all to the joint webinar by the Asian Vision Institute and the Daniel K. Inoue Asia Pacific for Center for Security Study, DKI APSTSS, on Cambodia aspiration for a successful ASEAN Chairmanship 2022, the economic community. The objective of this webinar is to exchange the different stakeholder perspective on how to strengthen Cambodia preparation for the ASEAN Chairmanship 2022 and to identify the recommendations to strengthen Cambodian preparation for effort for the ASEAN Chairmanship 2022. May I now introduce the brief agenda of today's webinar. We will have the welcome and keynote remarks by our guests of honor and um, the host. And then we have the group photo. In this session, uh, um, um, in the opening session, which is the uh, welcome remark and the keynote remark by our guests of honor and the host, um, we will live on Facebook. We are now uh, live streaming on the Facebook. And after this session, we will end our live streaming on Facebook and continue our session uh, uh, in the Zoom platform. And then we will have the group photo. We will have the background presentation, a 10 minute break, the panel discussion and the closing remark. So the core value of today's discussion is uh, to adhere to the transparency, mutual respect and inclusion. And for the non-attribution policy, to encourage open discussion, the non-attribution policy state that you may not quote anyone by name without express a consensus of their person. We will live stream the opening session on our Facebook page and record the plenary session only. The recording will be uploaded on YouTube in the next two weeks. So now allow me to double check the status of your mic and your camera. So please your, uh, have your mic mute and your camera off when you are not speaking. And to ask the question during the panel discussion and the presentation, please kindly click in, uh, on the chat button and type your question there. The question will be gathered by our moderator and will be answered live by the speaker during the Q&A session. Um, here, I would like to um, um, mention uh, about the participating of organization in today's webinar. We, will, uh, we have over 18 Cambodian governmental ministry and related institutions, many foreign embassy in Phnom Penh, including the Daniel K. Inouye Asia Pacific Center for Security Study, DKI APCSS, the Asian Vision Institute, ABI, and the observer from the US mission to ASEAN. And now let me move to the main agenda. It's about the welcome remark. Wait, may I now kindly invite His Excellency Dr. Saksi Pana, the chairman of the Asian Vision Institute or ABI to deliver his welcoming remark. Please Excellency, the floor is yours. Excellency, could you please turn on the mic? Okay. All right. Well, okay. So uh, let me say my greetings to uh, all the participants uh, and uh, say a big uh, welcome to Rear Admiral Peter Gumatatao. Um, uh, also to my good friend, uh, Ambassador Patrick Murphy. Uh, it's, uh, it's been a long time I have not seen you. Um, and to my old colleague and uh, dear friend, uh, Dr. Pigretti, uh, we go way back to the days of the WTO. So it's quite uh, refreshing to, to see you all again. Um, uh, of course, you know, Dr. Van der Rett, uh, you, you, you are in Singapore with me. So we, we, we do see each other quite often and discuss about ASEAN issue. Um, but anyway, uh, let me just say greetings to, to uh, everyone and uh, let uh, let's start the, uh, the the program uh to me it uh, this webinar is quite a, a a timely thing because we are only less than six months away from uh, 
Cambodia taking over the, the ASEAN Chairmanship. Uh, and I, I want to say that uh, this will be the third um, time that Cambodia take uh, over the chairmanship, uh, 2002. That's when uh, we barely joined the, uh, the ASEAN. Uh, so we joined 99 and then, uh, so two years later, we, we had the chairmanship, quite a big challenge. Um, and then 2012, which is, we, we have one decade of uh, experience, but still, you know, it, it's quite a big a challenge in terms of uh, uh, organizing and everything. And this time, you know, we, this will be the third time. And I want to say that this third time uh, would be more challenging the, than the, the, the first uh, two, because the, uh, the economic situation, the social economic situation of, uh, of the region is not good because of the pandemic and uh, the economy is not good. So this sort of like setting the stage of uh, why ASEAN chair will be so crucial, you know, in terms of uh, redirecting uh, energy uh, effort into the, the, the recovery period. Uh, I want to say that uh, way back uh, when we had our first chair, we, <laughs> we, we had a big challenge in the sense that, you know, uh, how to bring ASEAN together, you know, uh, how to uh, survive the, 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 the competition from, uh, you know, the region, you know, from China, the rising of China and everything. But this time it's, uh, it's more challenging because we are basically, you know, uh, starting almost from scratch because of the pandemic. Uh, so many things that is, uh, is happening now would require that we, we think uh, outside the box, that we think creative, that we think uh, more, you know, uh, aggressive in the sense on how do we go about uh, the recovery process? How do we make sure that uh, the recovery will be inclusive? Uh, sustainable, you know, uh, in the context of uh, this uh, pandemic, uh, in the context of uh, uh, the, the, the global and regional supply chain, how do we reestablish that again? You know, we have the ASEP, uh, which I hope uh, by next year uh, it will enter into force. Uh, so I think a few countries have uh, ratified already, Cambodia did uh, recently. Uh, and when it enters into force, uh, the, the challenge will be how do we mobilize uh, the, the private sector so that they can understand the rules, so that they can take advantage of uh, the, the, the ASEP. So, so these are some of the, 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 the difficulty that I, I foresee, you know, under our chairmanship. But again, these are not insurmountable uh, difficulty. It just requires a lot of preparation. It requires a lot of partnership. In this case, a uh, partnership with the U.S. matter quite a bit because let's face it, uh, the U.S. Uh, is a major market for Cambodia, uh, and we have to uh, make sure that uh, you know our industry can continue tapping uh, the benefit from uh, the, the the trade preference that the U.S. market offer to Cambodia, uh, and this is something that we we have to be mindful of. Of course, uh, another thing that matter quite a bit is uh, the the advent of the fourth uh, industrial revolution. You know, the the pandemic uh, bring us to uh, the realization that uh, we have to move, uh, you know, online, uh, whether we are savvy or not. Uh, you know, whether we know IT or not, uh, we have no choice. Uh, so a lot of challenge arising from this fourth industrial revolution in terms of. Uh, how does ASEAN country, how does Cambodia uh, for that matter, you know, uh, upskill our labor force so that they are more IT savvy, that sort of thing. Uh, how do we tap uh, the opportunity arising from e-commerce, for example. Uh, these are another aspect of uh, uh, the, the ASEAN uh, chair challenges. Uh, narrowing the development gap is another thing. Um, and Cambodia is definitely you know, on the on the the the, the, the other end, that mean we mean uh, we need to uh, really work hard to uh, reduce the, the development gap uh, in the context of uh, this uh, this this pandemic. Yeah. Uh, 
So I, I would say all in all, uh, the challenge for Cambodia championship uh, is there. It's not uh, uh, to, uh, I would say, to limit uh, this opportunity, but uh, we have to work very hard. We have to work very smart. We have to reach out to a partner, you know, a development partner, particularly, you know, uh, so that we can have a good program moving forward. Uh, ASEAN 2025 is, is looming. So uh, what would be the other challenge that we need to prepare ahead of that? Right? So I think I have pretty much set out uh, the, how I see the challenge facing uh, uh, ASEAN championship. Um, it, it's doable, it's, uh, you know, we, we can do it, but we do need uh, to do it in partnership with, uh, uh, you know, American friend, you know, a European friend, you know, a Asian friend, uh, so that at the end of the day, we can deliver uh, something uh, of, of sustainable for not just Cambodia, but for the ASEAN community as a whole. Yeah. So on that note, I want to say thank you uh, for the um, Rear Admiral uh, uh, Peter Gumatatao for, for, and your institute for helping us organize that. And I wish uh, the uh, event uh, a successful event. Thank you very much. So thank you, His Excellency Dr. Soksi Pana for the very insightful welcome remark. Now, may I kindly invite Rear Admiral Peter Gumata Tao, the Director of the Daniel K. Inouye Asia Pacific Center for Security Study, DKI APCSS, to deliver his welcoming remark. Please, Rear Admiral. Thank you, him and uh, Your Excellency. Dr. Saksapana, thank you so much for those kind words and the opening remarks. They're spot on, sir. You, you took a lot of my notes of what I wanted to say, but to everyone that is, to the, all the distinguished participants uh, for this third webinar in the series that looks to see how Cambodia can prepare uh, properly and leaning forward for this next ASEAN chair role, uh, I welcome all of you. And as they say in Hawaii, aloha. Aloha. <laughs> aloha, sir. Aloha. I want to recognize up front, of course, uh, first of all, the AVI chairman, Dr. Saksipana, for your leadership, sir. Thank you. And for being part of this, this event, as well as the president, uh, Dr. Chang Banarif. And of course, uh, I would be remiss not to recognize someone who has been a big part of uh, APCSS in regards to working in Cambodia, and that's the US ambassador to Cambodia, the Honorable Ambassador Patrick Murphy. Sir, it's good to have you up on the net and your team. So wanted to recognize uh, all three of you up front. And then there's several uh, groups of folks that I wanted to, to thank and, uh, and acknowledge up front. And, dis and Interestingly, it's not individuals that I am thanking, it's a collective group. And I think that's a good theme that we are seeing here. It's not just one perspective, it's how we can all come together to share views and collectively better understand how we can optimize uh, the role of Cambodia as the next ASEAN chair. So that first group obviously goes to our partner, uh, the Asian Vision Institute, AVI for your continuing partnership uh, with DKI APCSS, despite the, the COVID challenges, the restrictive challenges did not stop these two great institutions from working together to address a very vital topic of significance for Cambodia. The AVI staff, um, Mr. Chairman and, and Mr. President, they have done a remarkable job working with our team coordinating the logistics for this webinar and publicizing it, reaching out to participants and putting it together for a great program and speakers. When I was talking to Dr. Al Ohlers yesterday uh, in the final wrap of, of just the fine points about this webinar, uh, we both remarked about the incredible professionalism of what the AVI team has done to bring such a diverse group of, of agencies into this webinar series to, dis, to have discussions today. The second group I wanted to thank is the US Embassy at Phnom Penh. 
their, their support, their assistance in enabling DKI APCSS to participate in this partnership with AVI, I cannot underscore our appreciation for them and our collaboration in this journey, working side by side with our embassy. So thank you to all of them, Ambassador Murphy. And then the final group goes to all of the participants. I know we have, uh, so I'm looking at here, we have 76 people up on the net, but I, we have so many distinguished speakers, very experienced uh, participants that will be up, that have signed up, and most importantly, have made the time and investment to help contribute to a very open, candid, uh, non-attribution discussion that would help Cambodia uh, strengthen their preparation for this ASEAN chairmanship. So in my re opening remarks, I wanted to emphasize a couple of points. The first one, and I have to agree uh, with the chairman, uh, Dr. Saksikvana, when he talked about the economy and the impact of it. The economic dimension has always figured prominently in ASEAN. The COVID-19 pandemic has amplified the importance of, by causing severe economic dislocation, elevating the crucial importance of economic recovery, not just for respective countries, but for the region writ large. This point was emphasized at our very first webinar series with AVI back in March, if you all recall. And one key suggestion from that engagement then was for the establishment of a post-COVID-19 joint statement, an endorsement of an economic recovery plan to support ASEAN economies, especially in areas terribly affected in like tourism. So perhaps today we can explore this point and idea further in our discussions. The second piece that I wanted to emphasize is that Cambodia is assuming the chairmanship role at a very crucial time with an opportunity to lead collective ASEAN efforts among member states and in relations with the rest of the world. The sustainment of ASEAN centrality is of fundamental importance and is the commitment and promotion of multilateralism. So this was raised during our second webinar series with AVI in May when we discuss the political security community. It is a point no less significant for the economic community and pursuit of shared prosperity. So as you can see, this webinar three is a building block of this incredible partnership and effort that we've had working with AVI in consonance with our US embassy to be able to prepare Cambodia properly and and effectively for this next ASEAN chair. So in closing, I think today, today is an opportunity, an opportunity to slow down a little bit, to listen to some diverse perspectives on what priorities may Cambodia wish to focus on, to be able to strengthen the incredible positive momentum in economic community building, despite the corruption, uh, the, the interruption by COVID-19. I really do want to wish all the participants really a uh, productive discussions during this time that would hopefully will result in tangible recommendations on how strengthening Cambodia's efforts for the future. On behalf of the, the team, our DKI APCSS Ohana, our family, we are so honored to assist and we look forward to continuing our engagement with AVI on future opportunities in Cambodia. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Rare Emerald Gumar Tao Tao, for the very descriptive and inspirational remarks. So now, may I turn the floor to the keynote address remark by His Excellency Patrick Murphy, the Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of the United States to the Kingdom of Cambodia. So Excellency, the floor is yours. Jimmy Psua, I could down look Jim Tiu, look look Sarei Teng Akunjarang. Thank you very much. 
Ms. Hem, for the warm welcome. Let me offer a couple of greetings here at the top to our AVI chairman, Dr. So Sipana. You look terrific. It is very inspiring to see you. I look forward to being together very soon. Seeing you in your trademark bow tie really fills me with good spirit. Thank you for your partnership today. And as always, Dr. Sipan and I have worked on ASEAN issues together for the better part of a, of a decade. Uh, greetings to uh, President uh, Van Arendt of AVI. Thank you also for your partnership. And to my good friend and colleague, uh, the director of APCSS, uh, Pete Gumatautau. Pete, you also look terrific today, very Pacific Island-like. Aloha to you and your team. And uh, back at you with a great partnership. Uh, you have answered the call in working with us to partner with Cambodia in preparation for the ASEAN 22 chair year. We also have today joining us uh, experts from across Southeast Asia, uh, including here in Cambodia, who can share with us their valuable experiences and perspectives. So welcome to all of you and all of our participants. We also, I must point out, have a great impressive turnout. Like uh, Pete Gumatauta was saying, high numbers, but it includes a diverse array of Cambodian ministries. Uh, I think by our count, over a dozen, maybe even over 15 ministries, very diverse. I think this is really important because it reflects a commitment uh, to ASEAN and to a successful Cambodia 2022 chair year. So great to see all of these folks on board. You know, I throughout the course of my career, I constantly observe um, lots of analysts and other friends of Southeast Asia question and wonder about US engagement in the region. Is it deep engagement? Is it pulled back? Is it enough? Um, where is the United States is a frequent question. I've always found that a little bit amusing because from my vantage point, a 30 year plus career, the United States is extremely and closely engaged with Southeast Asia and specifically ASEAN. It was 44 years ago that the United States became a dialogue partner of ASEAN, and we were the first dialogue partner from outside ASEAN to partner uh, with the association. I think that's pretty uh, remarkable. And that was at a time when ASEAN was half of its current size. In subsequent years, the United States was very supportive of ASEAN's expansion. Uh, including the arrival of Cambodia, as Dr. Sapana said, in, in 1999. We also know that ASEAN is considering the candidacy of Timor-Leste. We are supportive of that. At the time that ASEAN chooses, we hope it will be soon, because then Southeast Asia would be very inclusive um, through the mechanism that ASEAN is. In 2008, and I remember this very well, we became the first a dialogue partner to name an ambassador to ASEAN. And then just a couple of years later in 2011, we were the first dialogue partner to open a resident mission in Jakarta to ASEAN. Uh, now I think all of the dialogue partners um, have ambassadors and have resident missions in Jakarta. So it's become kind of standard. And more recently for the last five years, uh, now six years, we have had a strategic partnership with ASEAN. And that's a very valued, critically important partnership for us in the United States and we think also uh, for ASEAN. Now, why? Why do we have such a close relationship with ASEAN? And the answer fundamentally, I think, is quite easy. Southeast Asia itself is a very important region. It's a dynamic place to live and work. I know that I've spent more than half of my career here, but also it's a region that's on the rise. This is a substantial population, over 650 million people call Southeast Asia home. It's a, it's a region that is very young population wise. Some 60% of the population is under the age of 35. It's even higher in a country like Cambodia, closer to 
Young means dynamic, young means creative and innovative. This is also the world's fastest growing digital market. Uh, what I understand from, from my team is that each day, 125,000 people in Southeast Asia become users of the internet. That's pretty remarkable. That's a lot of new folks every day. That makes this region very, very connected. The region is also incredibly diverse and Americans enjoy and appreciate and see the value in diversity. This region has great ethnic diversity, religious diversity, a diversity of systems of government. And that creates a lot of collective strength. There's also quite a bit of cooperation that we have across areas that are important to our individual countries, to our partnership and to the, to the globe. Um, how we partner on North Korea challenges, for example, on the climate, on maritime security, on human rights, all of these issues are quite important for our respective national interests. Now, today we're talking about the economy and the United States sees a strategic and economic importance in ASEAN and in our relationship with ASEAN. The ASEAN countries as a collective are our fourth largest trading partner in the world. And it's already been said by our other two speakers, the United States is a massive market for Southeast Asia. In fact, for Cambodia, the United States is Cambodia's largest export market by far. And that market is growing every year. The United States is the top outside investor in ASEAN. And one of our newest tools um, the Development Finance Corporation has already invested over a billion dollars to support projects here. So our economic engagement is expanding and growing at a very rapid pace. The United States, it must be said, is also a strong supporter of the ASEAN Economic Community since this was launched in 2015, same year that we established our strategic partnership. And why is this? It, the ASEAN integration agenda is very key to further advancing opportunities between us and prosperity for our populations and growth in our 11 economies. And what the uh, economic community is trying to do is pretty terrific and it's important for all of us to achieve common rules, standards on border and customs procedures, protection, of intellectual property, fair labor practices, environmental protections, efforts on anti-corruption. Many of these areas are works in progress, but we're here to partner because they are important for all of us. Now at the same time, and I think any of our ASEAN friends would also be honest about this, there are challenges to integration. ASEAN is comprised of different cultures, different histories, different languages, different levels of development, different political and social structures. This means achieving full economic integrations. It's not easy. It's also very key for close economic integration to have predictable, good governance across all of the members. And I think we can see that there are some challenges uh, in the region. We need strong, consistent legal frameworks uh, that protect the investments of all companies, indigenous companies and outside investors. And it sounds easy to achieve, but it's not. It really requires political commitment at the highest levels to a rules-based system. And we cannot separate the political security realm from the economic. And let me give you just a couple of examples as I conclude my remarks. All of us hope that nations can adhere to UNCLOS, the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, uh, the arbitration ruling, important ruling that it made here in the region in 2016. We hope ASEAN and China can achieve a code of conduct. Doing so will help prevent conflicts, but also has some implications on the economic side of the equation. It helps secure trade especially in one of the world's busiest shipping corridors, and that's through the South China Sea. 
So critical for safety and security uh, to have these measures in place, but it has economic benefits. Now, combating climate change, something we're all working very hard together on. Uh, this will help, we hope, uh, prevent extreme weather events, uh, ensure food security for our populations. But on the economic side, um, tackling climate change and achieving some success is good for tourism. A lot of tourists like to come to Southeast Asia to see cultural wonders, but also your natural resource wonders. So protecting the climate has economic benefits as well. We all would like to see an open internet. This allows American and other companies to do business in ASEAN, and it fosters a vibrant uh, local digital startup ecosystem. The key here though, is to have an open internet and to be mindful um, of a trend to be overly restrictive, which can hurt us all economically. Just to cite one sector that's important uh, in a number of countries, but quite important here in Cambodia, and that is the garment industry. It's been terrific to see Southeast Asian uh, countries succeed in expanding uh, this sector. Um, it's great for international fashion, um, and it provides jobs, but we must also make sure that in expanding this sector, we are addressing labor challenges. We have lessons to learn uh, from many different countries, even the United States. Uh, way back early in our industrial revolution, we must take efforts to prevent child labor and forced labor. That will be important, not only for the rules-based order that we all subscribe to, but also to do the right thing for humankind and to reap the economic benefits when there are good labor standards. So let me conclude by saying we very much support Southeast Asia's economic aspirations, including those of ASEAN through economic integration and an economic community. We especially support economic aspirations that sync with ASEAN's very core principles. Those core principles include efforts to protect independence, equality, and sovereignty. So what's this all about next year? Cambodia's ASEAN 2022 chair year. Uh, Dr. Sipan is uh, absolutely correct. Of course, this is the third time Cambodia has this opportunity, but chairing ASEAN has grown in its importance over the years, including over the last 10 years since Cambodia hosted. It's a great opportunity. Any chair as host, can showcase the success of their country, show off their cultural uh, wonders, great things like food and hospitality. Cambodia has a lot to be proud of and Cambodia has made a lot of success, including economic success. So it's a great opportunity to convene the leaders of the world. It's going to be incredible next year to see leaders coming from up to 27 countries that comprise the ASEAN Regional Forum and the 18 countries that comprise the very strategic East Asia Summit and the other partnerships that ASEAN and the Mekong have. But also with this opportunity comes responsibility. Cambodia will need to create a platform for these principles that I've addressed, for the values that are important to ASEAN and the partnership between the United States and ASEAN, and a platform to address the challenges of the day. Uh, Dr. Sipana, and Pete Gumatauto have referred to some of them. COVID will continue as a challenge, but there are, there are many more. There are many more. We have the emerging challenge of Myanmar, the persistent challenges of North Korea and the South China Sea. But we have great opportunities to advance cooperation in many of these and other areas. We wish Cambodia a very productive and successful ASEAN 2022 year. I say this frequently, the reason being is that Cambodia's success is also our success. So we're going to be good, reliable, committed partners going forward. Thank you for the opportunity today. Congratulations to AVI and APCSS and the partnership to advance these workshops, particularly today's important topic on economic integration. Akun Juran, thank you. So thank you, Ambassador Murphy, for the very motivational remarks. Thank you. And Excellency, 
Thanks, Excellency Dr. Saksi Panar, Rear Admiral Gumar Tao Tao, Ambassador Murphy, uh, for the very inspirational remark. Um, so uh, we have, um, you have made our day even more energetic today. Excellency, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, may I now announce the end of our live stream on Facebook. Thank you for watching and supporting our program. Thank you. So, yes. Okay, so now we have end the um, Facebook live session. So Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, may we now move to the preliminary, uh, preliminary Q&A session, which is actually the question that should be addressed to um, the, our co-host, uh, Dr. Saksi Pana, Rear Admiral Guma Tao Tao, and our guest of honor, His Excellency Ambassador Murphy. So we would like to welcome the question from our audience, whether you have any question from the floor, please kindly drop your question into the chat, chat box. Okay, I think I have the question that is actually uh, sent it directly to me. Um, first of all, um, the, quest, the question is actually addressed to Ambassador Murphy. The US is one of the largest market for Cambodia product, yet the trading activity between the two countries are relatively modest. In your opinion, what are the main challenges for the bilateral trade between the two countries? What could be the policy recommendation for the two countries to overcome those challenges? Yes, Ambassador, Ambassador please. Well, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Him. I, I think it's not incorrect to observe that the trading relationship is relatively modest with Cambodia, but that's simply a, reflect, a reflection of the fact that Cambodia's economy is on the smaller side. But the bottom line message here is this is a good news story. The economic relationship between our two countries is expanding rapidly. Uh, as I noted in my opening remarks, the United States is Cambodia's largest export market by far. Last year, during a global pandemic and a global economic downturn, Cambodia's growth in the U.S. market expanded by 26%. That's billions of dollars for the Cambodian market. Cambodia has done an incredible job taking advantage of access to the US market and the trade benefits that have been accorded under our generalized system of preferences, GSP. Uh, through that, Cambodia has expanded, uh, particularly in garments and textiles and in travel goods, but in some other interesting areas, including agriculture and bicycles. Cambodia is now a huge source of bicycles for the United States. This was very advantageous during COVID because Americans shifted many of their activities uh, due to the pandemic conditions and got on bicycles. And there's a huge demand for bicycles and Cambodia was there to meet that demand. So it's expanding very, very rapidly. The two-way trade between our countries has also expanded by closer to 30% last year and is continuing to grow at record rates this year. However, we do have a trade imbalance. My job as ambassador is to ensure that the Cambodian market is equally open to American companies and investors. And we're seeing some growth. We'd like to see more. In order to see more, we have to make sure there's a good investment climate here in Cambodia. So we work on issues like market access, protection of intellectual property, equal treatment, transparency, efforts to combat corruption. All of these things are important for the Cambodian economy and the relationship with us. But we have a growth here in American companies, American digital companies, American agricultural firms, <coughs> excuse me, and also American franchises. We um, hosted here, excuse me, um, over the last uh, two years, we've hosted a number of trade delegations here, combining traditional agricultural companies with high-tech companies. 
Um, and there is uh, enormous opportunity. And we also recently had a fair for uh, American franchising companies that are interested in the market here. So we'll likely see some expansion in, in, uh, in that over the years to come. Um, but I think the economic story is a, is a very good one. It's growing. Uh, we're working on an open skies agreement. We're working on some uh, opportunities for other big companies to access the market here, including Boeing and FedEx. And I think we'll see some success uh, if we all put our noses to the, to the grindstone. Um, in fact, later today, I'm going to be uh, launching a joint venture involving uh, a, a Cambodian company and a very famous American company, Brinks, famous for their security and financial security. We'll do that later today. Just the latest example of good partnerships and good opportunities between our two countries. So thank you. Back to you, Ms. Yen. So thank you, His Excellency. So um, I think we got another question actually that addressed to Dr. Saksipana. They um, he want Dr. Saksipana to elaborate more on the ASEAN Global Dialogue. So um, what is, um, uh, to your perspective, what is actually the role of the ASEAN Global Dialogue? And is there any room of improvement or promotion uh, for the ASEAN Global Dialogue? The audience actually uh, um, um, asked uh, Dr. Sussupanar to address or uh, elaborate on the ASEAN Global Dialogue. So, okay, yeah. Yes. Uh, well, you, you know, this will be the, the, the second time that the Cambodia S Chair will uh, organize this ASEAN Global Dialogue. Uh, Ten years ago, we, we had an opportunity to, to do that. And I, I want to say that uh, I have to give credit where credit is due. The idea of the ASEAN Global Dialogue came about from uh, the former, the late, uh, you know, uh, Secretary General ASEAN, Sarin Pitsavan. So we, we met and then uh, he thought, well, you know, Thailand missed uh, the opportunity to do it because at that time there was a big riot there, the red shirt, whatever. And he say, it'd be good opportunity for Cambodia to organize. Uh, basically, what it is, is that uh, we, the ASEAN 10 ASEAN leader, can uh, invite all the head, the major head of uh, international financial institution, uh, including uh, many UN uh, specialized agency to uh, meet with the ASEAN leader. Uh, and I think at that time, we have like the, the, the UN uh, Secretary General, we have... Uh, uh, the World Bank, the IMF, the ADB, uh, UNTA, WTO, they all came and met our, our leaders and they exchanged their view on how uh, they, they can uh, sort of like uh, uh, handle the economic. At that time, the, the focus was the, the financial crisis arising from the subprime, right? But I think this time, you know, our focus will be on the post-recovery uh, you know, aspect of it. So we plan to do a, a, a another round uh, and uh, probably expand to bring additional specialized agency that are more uh, related to uh, the, the, the micro aspect of it. Let's say for example, uh, the World Bank will tackle the large issue, the IMF, uh, the ADB, but we bring other agency like uh, UNIDO, for example, the International Trade Center, along with the WTO to respond to uh, trade issues that relate to small and medium-sized enterprise, for example. Uh, so that will be a two-hour event. And uh, I think it will be a good opportunity to, to have a, a frank exchange uh, between ASEAN leader and uh, the, the, uh, the head of uh, international financial institution and uh, UN specialized agency. Yeah. Okay, so thank you, Dr. Sipana, for the very inspired, uh, um, like um, descriptive answer. And then we have another question, actually posed directly to me as well. So um, to um, Rare Emerald Guma Tao Tao, would you mind explain or brief the role of the U.S. in digital trade promotion and open internet governance? Yes, thank you for that question. Um, 
the role of the U.S. for the digital trade, um, actually from the region and globally, it's all interconnected. And I, I think to address that specific question, you have to look at the totality of, of, the, of what is changing around us in the world. I, I think the bigger question in terms of digital trade is, is trying to understand how that applies not just to each respective country, but having uh, leaders from all these countries come together that are experts in their own right to be able to compare notes to discuss in, in this emerging area that is rapidly growing, what are some of the uh, concerns on standards and rules that, that should be addressed when respective countries are drawing up their own policies? How is that interactive and fair across the board? And so the first, first step is the awareness of some of the gaps and shortfalls that countries do have within their, within, within their respective shores. And then secondly, to be able to have dialogues like we're doing today. In, in this particular case, we're talking about ASEAN uh, chairmanship preparation for Cambodia. But imagine if you will, if we had the same interagency leadership that's up on this uh, discussion for this webinar, to talk about some of those uh, awareness or maybe not awareness, digital trade and, and uh, the US's role is that you know we seek for a secure, stable, and prosperous region, and the U.S.'s interest uh, is for economic viability writ large globally, uh, and and because of uh, the benefits that uh, it's a win-win for many countries to include the U.S. So given the given the uh, impact that is occurring in the digital trade world in terms of what are the implications. I think it is imperative to have these transparent discussions and then to also share lessons learned uh, by countries and organizations so that we can be asking the right questions and then tee those questions up to policymakers as they develop their own policies uh, that will promote this collaborative and transparent effort uh, in the world of digital trade. Over. Okay, so thank you, Ray Admiral Guma Tao Tao. I think we have, uh, oh, okay, so many questions. Okay, let me pick up another question. It's actually addressed to Ambassador Murphy. Your Excellency and your colleagues from the U.S. Embassy have strongly supported the American Chamber of Commerce in Cambodia, which is MCHAM. May we know your perspective on the important role played by the MCHAM in attracting American investment to Cambodia, and what could be the potential investment opportunity for the U.S. company in Cambodia? Well, thank you. It's, it's a great question. And it allows me to acknowledge right up front that uh, governments cannot do it alone. You know, we need to work with partners in civil society and in the private sector. And we've had a longstanding partnership with the American Chamber of Commerce here in Cambodia that dates back now 25 years and is growing stronger every year. We have mutual objectives. AmCham and the embassy both would like to support American companies and investors here in Cambodia. It's part of my responsibility as a U.S. ambassador. Uh, that's good for our economy. It's good, of course, for the Cambodian economy. We want to work together to help improve the business climate. Uh, I addressed that uh, issue earlier. Um, and we also want to strengthen the economic ties between our two countries. So this is a very natural partnership. Now, for the very first time uh, this year, we uh, have developed a joint work plan together uh, so that we can formalize uh, some efforts to advance these objectives. And uh, it's really terrific, I think, that our teams 
My very strong economic commercial team at the embassy worked with AMCAM on this work plan. And we've agreed to, uh, to do a couple of things. Let me just share with you a few examples. We wanna promote uh, US business uh, to grow um, the bilateral uh, economic ties and expand trade. One example is that franchise fair and expo that we did uh, a few months ago. We worked jointly with AmCam to, uh, to develop that, AmCham, sorry. Um, we also wanna advocate for good policies here that uphold important business values. American business values are what I like to say the gold standard uh, around the world. We wanna help uh, share those values with others, including the need for good transparency, fairness, uh, market-based approach to uh, our economic expansion. So we are planning some event, events going ahead here in Cambodia, uh, in particular related to the emerging digital laws here on cybersecurity, cybercrime, and e-commerce so that we can partner with Cambodian stakeholders for, for good results. We also wanna promote good corporate social responsibility. And American companies really excel at this. And what does CSR mean? Fundamentally, it means giving back and having good relations with communities, especially communities that are in need. And our companies do great work, volunteer work, contributions, partnerships, donations when there's a, a time of need. And the COVID period has provided, I think, a very good example. Uh, we've had uh, Coca-Cola, well-known American company, RMA, another company here that, among other things, uh, runs franchises and imports Ford vehicles, do some very, very good work on corporate social responsibility, good models. Um, with our partnership, um, AmCham, a couple of years developed an annual series of awards to reflect good CSR practices on the part of US companies. Finally, the work plan includes efforts to support women in business. I'm particularly proud of that stream in the, in the work plan because women are incredibly important to the Cambodian economy, um, but face some particular ob obstacles and, and challenges in advancing. And we wanna help with the gender equality efforts here. We're very much proud to support and engage with AmCham on this, uh, including through a women's committee uh, to focus on op opportunities. We already have through our USAID programming efforts to support women entrepreneurs here, very successful. Um, we Act uh, is one of the well-known programs that we have and women entrepreneurs just given a few tools, access to financing, some moral support can do great things with small businesses, creating jobs, good opportunities, especially for, for women. So we're delighted to be working with AmCham on that and many other issues. So thank you for that great question. Back to you. So thank you, Ambassador. I think uh, we have, due to the time limitation, I will pick only another question. So this question, let me pick up this, okay. Okay, I'm sorry, Ambassador, but um, this question is actually addressed to you again. It's about the comprehensive and progressive agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership. Uh, the audience asks, when will the U.S. re-engage and rejoin that partnership? Yes. Yeah, thank you very much also for that question. You know, trade is really important for the United States and the new administration has made it very clear that the Asia Pacific region is an important trading partner. These are still early days. We're in the first year of the new administration that is formulating strategies, including for the Indo-Pacific, the Asia Pacific and Indo-Pacific. So I think we'll see more to come. But some of the tools that I've already referred to, including the, uh, the DFC, other uh, uh, U.S. executive branch agencies like USTDA, the uh, Departments of Commerce and Treasury, USAID, State Department, um, also our Export-Import Bank are all institutions very heavily engaged in the region, including here in the region and in Cambodia. We've had some very good projects through DFC and the uh, Exim Bank uh, to support Cambodian businesses. With regards to trading arrangements, 
We've had TIFA talks with Cambodia already this year, trade and investment framework agreement. Um, and we've had talks with other countries uh, through the TIFA mechanism and also efforts to advance free trade agreements. So I think we'll see more. Um, I'll have to hold it at that. I think the new administration is still examining uh, the TPP, the CPTPP, that's quite a mouthful for an acronym, um, on opportunities to, uh, to re-engage. But remember, the original effort, uh, the TPP, the United States was quite engaged on that. What remains true is that uh, the United States values trade, trade agreements, multilateral arrangements, where there is fairness and, and transparency and good standards. Uh, so I think I can safely say, uh, even though I'll hold back on uh, where we are going forward specifically, uh, to the extent there are conversations, those elements will be very important for the United States. Transparency, equal treatment, protection of intellectual property, uh, environmental standards, um, uh, and good labor standards. All of these are really key. You just can't have a trade agreement for the sake of trade. These other elements are critical as a matter of value and principles, but also because they're self-fulfilling for good economic results. So I, I hope that helps, but I appreciate the question. Thank you. So thank you, Excellency Ambassador, and thank you, Dr. Sopsi Pena and Emerald Gata. Okay, um, uh, thank you, Ms. Sotirot, for uh, handing over the floor. A uh, very good morning to uh, Excellencies, uh, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, first of all, allow me to briefly introduce myself. Um, my name is Meng Hu Lim. I am the uh, Deputy Director of uh, the Mekong Center for Strategic Studies of ABI. And I am the moderator for these sessions. In this session, joining me, we are having uh, Dr. Tim Yua, um, who will deliver uh, background remarks for this session. Uh, Dr. Tim is going to deliver the uh, background remarks on the topic of uh, ASEAN Economic Community, Priorities and Opportunities for Cambodia as the ASEAN Chair in 2022. A very good morning to you from Cambodia, Dr. Tim. How are you? Thanks very much and very well. Um... Okay, um, I would like to inform uh, uh, the participant that uh, Dr. Tim is currently the uh, professor at the College of Security Study, uh, DKI APCSS. And he has over 30 years experience as an economist and a lawyer advising governments and other organizations in Southeast Asia, Micronesia, Africa, the Middle East, and the United States, of course. Uh, Dr. Tim received a bachelor degree uh, in uh, chemistry and uh, political science from the uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology a Juris Doctor degree from Harvard Law School, a Master of Public Policy from the Kennedy School of Government, uh, Harvard University, and also a PhD in Public Policy from the Harvard Graduate School of Arts and Science. Uh, Dr. Tim, it is uh, our great pleasure to have you as uh, one of our speakers in this uh, webinar. Thank you very much for your contribution. So I would like to inform uh, all the participants that uh, you could post your questions uh, to Dr. Tim in the chat box here. And I will deliver the questions to Dr. Tim during the Q&A session after his presentation. So without further delay, I would like to hand over the floor to Dr. Tim for the background remarks. Dr. Tim, the floor is yours. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, um, and uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It is an, a rare opportunity and a privilege to be able to speak to you today. I am uh, working, excuse me. Um, I, I just wanted to say I've been working on ASEAN since about 2007, specifically on the ASEAN economic community. And uh, looking at the names uh, listed here, I, I see quite a few who I've met um, in other guises over the years. And so uh, I look forward to our discussion. I want to also just before I begin, put out the standard disclaimer that the views that I'm going to be expressing are mine and not the views of the US government. So with that, uh, let me get uh, moving. Um, I hope that you all can see my slides. 
The, um, as an outline of my presentation, I'm gonna talk very briefly about the Cambodian economy. Uh, you all probably know it better than I do, but I just wanted to have a few things out there. We'll talk then some about the ASEAN Economic Community Goals, ASEAN Economic Blueprints and Plans, and then finally some approaches to AEC priorities. I know that there's going to be a uh, discussion in the second panel that will really go into sort of in depth on this. So I'm going to give it sort of from a, a bit of an overview perspective. So with that, I want to talk just a little bit about the um, Cambodian economy, because I think it is useful to think about the uh, Cambodian economy as Cambodia thinks about what it wants to highlight for its chairmanship year. Clearly, some priorities will be driven by global and regional trends, but some should be driven by what is important for Cambodia, and they will be. So just talking a little bit about the, about the structure of the Cambodia economy, to just sort of what's important. Uh, we've actually heard a little bit of this, uh, of the discussion about the rise of manufacturing uh, that we've seen over the past decade within Cambodia. It's, go it's grown tremendously. And you can see that, um, that manufacturing is growing. Agriculture, which you know, was huge in uh, Cambodia a while, a while back, is still very important for large portions of the country but has been declining over the past decade. That's what those arrows here mean. That's what's happened over the past decade where the numbers are what's happened uh, is the status in 2019 or 2020. Also, it's important that um, <clears throat> the uh, service, it, it, to, to highlight that services are the largest sector for employment have been growing, the amount of employment has been growing very rapidly. And so that's another very important area for the Cambodian economy. And just, I, I was, uh, the ambassador stole, uh, uh, the ambassador and a lot of the people have spoken about a lot of the topics that I wanna cover here. This chart shows Cambodia's exports, um, on the left side, it shows what they are and it highlights garments, uh, footwear, trunks, uh, uh, suitcases and gold. Uh, but it also then says, where does it go? So the United States is the largest, um, is larger than the next two uh, uh, destinations of uh, Cambodian exports, but also the EU is very large and countries in the region like Singapore and Thailand. Um, and then imports, what, what does Cambodia imports? So it's a broad, grow, uh, a broad range of things, refined petroleum as you expect, some oil and gas, um, the light, the, the fabrics, the green stuff is the really inputs into the garments. The light blue is electronic goods. And you see gold standing out there that, that has to do with the gold exports. But the more interesting thing here for me is the role of China, v Thailand and Vietnam and Singapore as the sources of this. So on, while on the export side, there's a sort of diverse set of export markets, import markets are pretty concentrated. And this may, you know, and so this may help highlight, you know, where uh, the kinds of uh, policies or the direction of policies you might want to think on the import side. Um, next, just wanted to talk about the importance of SMEs. You all know this, uh, but and we can't uh, emphasize this enough. Uh, SMEs are critically important to the Cambodian economy, but the economies of most of the government of the countries of ASEAN. Here in Cambodia, we're talking about, you know, 99.8% of companies, 58% of GDP. Um, this, is, this is important and I think we'll, we'll see that and we'll have to think about that when we talk about where Cambodia's priorities for its chairmanship year um, come up. And then, and then uh, as also has been discussed already, the issue of the digital economy. Um, Cambodia is, you know, it, it only has about 53% of the population using the internet, which is modest, um, but has a relative, a relatively higher social media users and very wide uh, mobile connection penetration. So I think it's up and coming. There's lots of opportunities here. Clearly, digital economy is going to be important as we think through um, issues for the future. So um, next, I did want to talk a little bit about the ASEAN economic community principles. Um, you know, from the time of the ASEAN charter in 2007, ASEAN was committed to uh, founding the ASEAN community in 2015. 
and with its three pillars, including the ASEAN Economic Community. The AC was successfully uh, launched in 2015 and has certain core principles. And these um, core principles, are, most everyone I think knows who's been working in this area, creating a single market and production base, enabling a highly competitive economic region, addressing regional development divide, uh, which was something that um, the, uh, was mentioned earlier today, um, and promoting equitable inc and, and inclusive growth. And finally, adopting open regionalism, which is very important for um, engaging the rest of the world. Um, these principles are out there, and then they have been incorporated into a series of blueprints, work, uh, work plans, and action plans that get implemented. And so we're going to talk I want to talk just base, briefly about some of the big ones. Um, the alt, back in 2007, when the when the um, ch charter was coming out, we had the ASEAN the roadmap for the ASEAN community. It set out blueprints for including the ASEAN uh, economic community blueprint with its strategic action plans, and those are what led us to the um, announcement of the community in 2015. Today, we've got. ASEAN 2025, Forging Ahead Together, which is the contains the ASEAN econo current ASEAN Economic Community Blueprint through 2025. The principles which are listed here are very similar to the ones that we've just discussed for the, the, um, the principles of the ASEAN community, but these are the these are the broad categories of areas that the ASEAN Economic Blueprint covers. One of the things in the ASEAN Economic Blueprint is the importance of um, the initiative for ASEAN integration or um, the uh, narrowing the development gap. And so there have been a, a series of work plans which are important for Im improving the well being of Cambodia, Laos, PDR, Myanmar, Vietnam. The, uh, and this Current round, the fourth one, which applies now and which just came out last year, uh, covers food and agriculture, trade facilitation, micro, small, and medium enterprises. Again, themes that were likely that are good themes as we think about what priorities could be for Cambodia for 2022. And then finally, we've also heard mentioned um, once or twice the ASEAN Comprehensive Recovery Framework, which provides five different um, uh, broad strategies for uh, recovery, including the first one is health, the human security, more important to uh, the economic community are strategies three, four, and five, which are listed here on uh, the inter expanding the intra-ASEAN market, accelerating digital transformation, and advancing towards a more sustainable and resilient future. So again, these are all categories that we should be thinking about and ways to consider um, developing our, our priorities or the priorities for uh, 2022 for ASEAN. And finally, I, you, can't, you can't not mention the master plan and ASEAN connectivity, which is out there, which has, again, another set of, uh, of uh, important uh, visions, including infrastructure, digital innovation, logistics, regulatory excellence, and people mobility. All of these are setting out sort of broad categories of approaches to priorities. And they, these are ASEAN's existing priorities uh, for development and the ones that uh, Cambodia needs to pick and choose from as it develops its priorities for its year. So then, I want to talk very briefly about approaches to AEC priorities. For me, there are two ways that we need to, that we should think about uh, developing priorities for 2022. The first is at a very strategic level. Um, you know, promote SME development and the importance of SMEs. That is an is a priority, and that should be one of the that is potentially a core priority. We've heard a discussion of preparing for the fourth industrial Rev revolution or 4IR, another important issue. Addressing the digital divide among ASEAN member states, another critical issue as we move forward in the digital, digital economy. Addressing COVID 
uh, from a health standpoint, addressing tourism and the loss of tourism uh, through uh, due to COVID. All of these are very high level um, priorities that could be um, included in a set of priorities for Cambodia. But those aren't practical in the sense of getting something done this year. Yes, that's important. It's a goal, it's a vision. Um, what we need from time to time is something very more practical. And how can we, how can we drill those down to something that, you know, when, the, when you write the report or when the, um, the ASEAN uh, summit document comes out, you can say, yes, we did this thing. And that's going to be very important. So now I wanna talk a little bit about how one would think about doing that. And to do that, I have to put up an eye chart. So I apologize in advance for this, for what I'm gonna put on the screen. Nobody can read this. The important part is this represents the ASEAN committee structure. It's an old chart. Um, I wish there were a new one, but I haven't found it. But all of those in yellow are the various committees, working groups, et cetera, that are part of the ASEAN economic community. Ignore what they are, just recognize that there are a lot of them. Um, each one of those committee has a work plan, has a program, has something that it's working on. And often what I say when I'm talking to people about ASEAN is if you want to get a policy, you start at the top and you get the summit to agree or the chair to say, ah, SMEs are important. We're going to have SMEs as our high priority. But if you want to get something done, you want ASEAN to adopt something, you want countries to change the way that you do things, you have to get down to the bottom. You have to talk to the working groups, talk to the subcommittees, talk to the senior officials and move things through that policy process. That is what gets you a, an agreement to change policy. And so following the, or working on those is very important. And so um, I just listed here a few of the different plans, each one of those committees, there's the Digital Integration Framework Action Plan out there um, set up by the ASEAN Coordinating Committee on E-Commerce. There's the ASEAN Work Program on Electronic Commerce, which is being <coughs> revised and turned into the Digital Economy Work Plan. There's the, you know, the AEC 2025 Trade Facilitation Strategic Action Plan. There's plan after plan. As we try to, as you try to think about what it is that you want to do, you want to be delving into these sectoral plans and finding out what's working, what's moving forward, what could be brought to the finish line with just a little push from um, the Cambodia chair. And that's in my experience, what is most effective in getting something very concrete done. So I'm, I'm gonna talk about a few of these concrete things. I don't, you know, the, these are just out there for consideration. Uh, and as I said, not US government, this is Tim Buer's own personal view. Um, so, you know, some things in trade facilitation as an example. Um, there's some, there's a discussion about how could you prioritize low value shipments and which is really saying, how can we prioritize e-commerce shipments? And there could, and there was a discussion on that and the uh, ASEAN um, Coordinating Committee on Trade Facilitation, <coughs> it, or actually the Joint Coordinating Committee on Trade Facilitation is, um, has, uh, has been looking into that and you know, setting up a pilot program on low value shipments might be something that could be done in you know, 2022. Um, there's been a lot of work on authorized economic operators over the year, years, you know, moving that forward and bringing that in, um, connecting up dialogue partners to the ASEAN single window to facilitate trade. Uh, and again, and I apologize, these are very in the weeds kinds of things, but these, in my view, these are what you need to drill down to to get something very specific done, whether it's these, you know, or not, doesn't matter. But you need to drill down to this level. The uh, launch of the ASEAN Trade and Goods Agreement, uh, update negotiations, or expanding the ASEAN Customs Transit System to cover two trans two country transactions. <clears throat> All of these are possible areas under trade facilitation. Digital economy. 
there's tons of things that could be done here. I'm just going to throw out a few ideas. One is the digital uh, ASEAN e-payments index and report. You know, e-payments are going to be critical over the next you know decade. Getting that working uh, through this through in the region is important. Coming up with a QR code payment system. I know that the um, the central banks are working on this, and I've been away a little while. They may have gotten a lot of progress on this, but that's another area which could be critically important because every country is working on QR codes and using QR codes for financial payments, but making those interoperate in some way is critical um, for developing a, a regional market. And then issues like updating the ASEAN digital integration framework. Um, or uh, which is, uh, you know, how the, the program that ASEAN wants to do uh, to, to implement digital integration. Um, and so, and then you know, finally on inclusive development, there's something that I, I must admit, this one's just on me. That we, we created, we helped uh, create the ASEAN SME Academy many, a few years ago. And that's a, a system for trying to provide training materials for SMEs critically important if you want to promote SME development. Well, update it, work with uh, the various uh, chambers of commerce and US ASEAN um, Business Council is working with ASEAN on this. You know, that would, could be a priority. ECITES certificates exchange would help agriculture improving the ability of, of, of legal trade in agriculture in animals to continue. There are many areas out there where you can drill down and try to look at the work plans of these various organizations, uh, the various committees, and find things that can be completed um, in your chairmanship year. And with that, I finished <clears throat> my overview presentation. Mahalo, and I would really like to, you know, just leave you with the one thought that, you know, it's important to it's important to think big, but it's important also to think small. And um, so that we can have very concrete deliverables that can be accomplished during the chairmanship year and highlighted as accomplishments. I've seen that done time and again by uh, chairs over the years. Um, my, uh, the US, US government through its support to uh, the ASEAN Secretariat has um, provided support on a number of chair deliverables uh, in areas like small and medium enterprises, like in, in uh, e-commerce, uh, smart cities, and other areas. We have dialogue partners out there who are ready to help, and we have um, lots of opportunities. So with that, I would end my um, presentation and would be open to questions um, from folks. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Tim, for your uh, very comprehensive and meaningful, uh, meaningful presentation. Uh, I believe that uh, our audience today uh, will have uh, a lot of new insights uh, from your presentation. So uh, for now, we have come to the uh, Q&A and the discussion question, uh, session for, for this uh, session. Um, you know, I would like to inform the participant that uh, you could post your questions uh, to Dr. Tim in the chat box here, and I will deliver the question to uh, Dr. Tim. But uh, uh, Dr. Tim, um, you know, um, to, to start off our discussion, uh, I have a, a, a follow-up question for you. You know, um, in your presentation, you, you highlighted uh, some key principles or priorities uh, for, for ASEAN, for example, um, as a me, for example, uh, the role of uh, industrial revolution, uh, for example, the role of digital economy, uh, tourism, or COVID-19 whatsoever. Um, my question to you is, uh, what could be, you know, next year, Cambodia will be the chair of ASEAN. So what could Cambodia, as the chair of ASEAN, contribute to, to promote, you know, this kind of uh, strategic priorities? Thank you. Great question. Thank you very much. Um, Again, I think it's twofold. <clears throat> Cambodia needs to, or should, or can highlight the core areas which it believes are critical for recovery, 
um, from COVID for criti in the in the area of economics, and um, and just that are critical for the CLMV countries, for Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, uh, Myanmar, and Vietnam, for uh, narrowing the development gap. So issues like um, tourism development, you know, looking at tourism bubbles, thing, things of that sort. I, my understanding is right now the ASEAN Committee on Tourism is developing a tourist, its tourism recovery plan. Well, get a copy of the plan, see what's in it, and let's identify one or two key um, actions that are within the plan that can become the priorities, because that's how often how it, one of the problems that ASEAN has, I've been working with ASEAN for a long time, is that it has lots of plan, lots of ideas, is always working on lots of things. It is critical. It is really important for the chair to come in and say, I know we got all these things and they're all very, very important. <laughs> but this one is particularly important to me. So let's just get this one over the finish line this year. We'll keep working on them all, not saying don't work on those, but let's just get this one over the finish line. And I've seen things happen that I almost wouldn't have believed could happen when the chair does this. I mean, example, and I apologize for doing, you know, I always will talk about things I've worked on. Um, the uh, ASEAN single window, under the Thai, during the Thai chairmanship year, the Thai said, darn it, we're gonna get all 10 ASEAN member states up and running during our year. And that had been going on for years and years. But when Thailand said it, and Thailand was serious, and Thailand you know, got working with them, they accomplished it and it happened. People came together and made it happen. So, you know, again, talking about COVID um, and tourism, I think that's a great example. We could talk broadly about the importance of bubbles and all of these things um, right now, but look, the experts have been working on this. I'm sure the Cambodian, the Cambodian Ministry of Tourism, if that's its name, um, has been working as part of that identifying the two or three things that are in the recovery plan that you want to see done and over the finish line during 2022 is a great way to actually accomplish something and move things forward. And the same thing on SMEs, the same thing on digital economy, the same thing on trade facilitation. Pick your topic. You've got experts in your country that have been working with ASEAN for years. They know what's moving. They know what's not moving. Um, they can try to identify the ones that can move that they think that they can push. And I think that's critical. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tim. You know, uh, in connection to your answer here, we have a follow-up question on that. Uh, you know, since you mentioned about the ASEAN single window, um, may we know what roles the U.S. may play to expedite the progress or the process of implementing the ASEAN single window? Thank you. Oh, you don't want to get me started on the ASW. That's a, <laughs> I could talk for hours on that. I have. Um, well, first, let me say that the U.S. government has been the primary sponsor of the work on the ASEAN single window since 2006. Um, and we, and has supported all aspects of its development. We um, helped to, uh, helped ASEAN to design the software that was ultimately used, get it installed in, in each of the countries and help everybody understand how it works. You've got a fantastic team there in Cambodia. Uh, Sophia's on from Customs is on board. I can't say enough good things about it um, and his team. They are great. They are able to do um, fantastic things and they actually helped us get, a, get everybody over the hump to, um, to being on board uh, back in the Thai year. So I think this is important. So um, US has continued to be engaged. We're looking at various important things. U and I think right now the big deal for the US on the ASW and where the US wants to work very closely with ASEAN is connecting to dialogue partners, specifically the United States. The US uh, Customs and Border Protection is waiting would, would connect with the ASEAN single window in an instant. And you know, I don't want to overstate, you know, I can't speak for USAID and the funders on, on that side, but there's been a lot of interest over the years in making that happen. 
And I think that if there were a, a um, you know, that's something where the U.S. is, is heavily engaged, continues to be engaged, uh, working with the, the various committees, uh, but there's a lot of work to do. But that's, yeah, something that they could do. And, and Cambodia is very active. You've got really good people on this and um, they know exactly what to be done. And so I, I definitely encourage that. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tim. Uh, we have around 10 minutes for, for more questions and uh, I can see that uh, there are a lot of questions already here. Uh, Dr. Tim, the next question for you is, uh, can you help elaborate more on the uh, ASEAN SME Academy uh, <laughs> and how to make it more impactful? Thank you. <laughs> oh, I love these questions. These are great. <laughs> um, the, ASEAN, the ASEAN SME Academy, you can find it by Googling, you know, ASEAN SME Academy. Um, it is a learning platform that was created by the ASEAN Coordinating Committee on Small and Medium Enterprises uh, back in at least five or six years now. I forget exactly when we when it was launched. Um, it was done in conjunction with a lot with a number of U.S. companies, uh, mostly under the auspices of the um, U.S. ASEAN Business Council. Um, it was uh, USAID um, contributed, it worked a lot. One of my staff members on the project that I ran at the time, it, it was her life for about two years to make that happen. And uh, she did an amazing job. Um, Galu, Ibu Galu, she's an amazing person. Um, it is. It provides short training videos quite often, but animations, information, on various aspects of running a, a small or medium enterprise. So some things on accounting, some things on business practices, some things on uh, standard terms, kinds of, of techniques you need to learn if you're going to be a successful small business person working in an international uh, realm. So tr trading, because we had to limit it somewhat. So it's, it's really focused on small and medium enterprises which want to trade. Um, it's out there, what it needs is more content. It ne and it also needs content in Cambodian. It needs Cambodian content in Laotian. So one of the big things to improve it would be to, um, to get some you know, translated content. The other thing that it needs right now in terms of upgrades is a, um, an app. Right now it's a, it's a web application, it's, it's on the web and it works on people's phones and it was designed to be mobile first, but you know, it's not an app. So an app would go a long way to making it uh, to really to, to work. And, you know, Cambodia has got a lot of good IT folks. I bet they could whip one out and they could whip one out in Khmer, which would be fantastic. So those are the kinds of things that could be really helpful to the, um, to the ASEAN SME Academy. Please go log on. It's a great thing. You should check it out. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tim. We will definitely check it out. <laughs> um, okay, uh, next one, uh, we, we would like to move to the, um, you know, the, um, the rivalry between the U.S. and China and uh, how it, uh, you know, impact the, uh, the ASEAN community, especially on economic building community. The question for you is, uh, do you see any challenge or problems, you know, uh, uh, for ASEAN uh, economic community building? Uh, particularly admits the um, escalating U.S.-China rivalry, and also, uh, do you see do you see uh, any way that the U.S. and China could work together uh, to advance the interests of uh, ASEAN and also the uh, solidarity of the association? Thank you. Um, well, I, I, I'm going to stick to the economic stuff because I don't want to get into all the political. You know, not mine. You should have asked that question to the ambassador. <laughs> That's what he does. Um, the, uh, on the economic side, I think the, um, you know, both the United States and China are trying to promote development of the region. Um, and, you know, it is in the interest of, you know, the, the ASEAN region is a major source of, uh, of, um, intermediate inputs into the Chinese economy, raw material inputs into the Chinese economy. And a, major, and a major destination of goods for the Chinese economy. The US is a major um, 
is a major export de uh, destination for the region. It's a major source of investment, larger, inv larger source of investment in general than China is for the region. So all of these things, um, you know, I, I don't think there's a, that whatever is going on in terms of global, uh, of geopolitics, ASEAN is well positioned to take advantage of, um, of both of, of all countries. Let's, you know, even generalize it beyond just China and the United States. It is a key market. Everyone wants to support ASEAN. The, you have dialogue part, you know, EU is a dialogue partner, the US, China, Japan, Korea, Australia. They're all working collaboratively to, uh, promote, the, to promote ASEAN, to promote ASEAN centrality. Um, I come from having run US managed uh, from the private sector, as a, not as a US government employee, uh, programs at the ASEAN Secretariat for 11 years. One of the things that I really enjoyed about that was the way in which we, all of us collaborated. All of the different projects from all of the different countries got together periodically, said, hey, how can we work together? We helped each other out. So there's always been a very um, supportive and collaborative area there. And the other thing, and then, and then at the same time, the, the governments in their uh, relations would get together to try to make sure that they were cooperating and collaborating. So I think there's great opportunity there for ASEAN and, and I don't see it as present, if anything, it creates opportunities. It doesn't create problems. Thanks. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Tim. I think uh, we have uh, around five minutes for, for our session here. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm really more interest, interested in, uh, you know, the key priority that you mentioned, uh, mm -hmm. particularly on the uh, digital economy. Yep. Uh, do you think that uh, this is a, a way that can, you know, help uh, the ASEAN uh, community, uh, particularly in the post-COVID-19 uh, uh, post economic recovery plan? Do you think this is a key for, for the association? Thank you. Oh, you know, absolutely. For first, I want to thank um, uh, Kanchara Niem for putting the link to the SME Academy into the uh, into the chat box, so everybody can just click on it and get there. But back to your question on the digital economy, the um, um, it, you know it, it, we know, and the ambassador and others spoke about this during their remarks we've seen this tremendous growth of the digital economy and this tremendous increase in our acceptance and use of the digital economy during COVID. That's a freight train that we all need to get on and we need to promote and we need to find ways to make it work even better. Um, it is one of the big growth areas in the global economy, something that we can, we, you know, that will help all the countries. But to do that, we need to be looking at the infrastructure and access. And, it, you know, and, and you know, for a country like Cambodia, for, well, for ASEAN, finding, excuse me, finding ways to make sure that things are in, in local languages, finding ways to, to make sure that people have access. Because one of the most interesting things, we did some work on um, um, universal service obligations, which is really important. Cambodia, uh, is trying to do some work on there, and this is a good one that that ASEAN could that Cambodia could pick up on, which is you know how to promote and expand the definition of universal service obligations. I can tell you, there's a wonderful report on this out there <laughs> that we drafted or that we supported. Um, the uh, you know finding ways to um, expand access is going to be critical. One of the things I learned when I was helping ASEAN in that area is that it's not, you know, you, you think, oh, well, it's rural people can't get online or people, poor people can't afford devices. All of those are true. The biggest reason why people aren't getting online of the people who aren't online, for the most part, it's there's no content that interests me or it's not in my language. Um, and I think that's where ASEAN could you know, sort of think about things a little bit more creatively is how do we deal, you know, let's not, you know, let's not deal with, you know, putting out more cell towers or laying more fiber optic cable. Nice, gives jobs to people who already have jobs. Um, what's really important is finding content that's meaningful and doing it in a, in a language that 
makes people want to get online. And that's what's critical. And that's what, um, you know, the, the work that was being done by ASEAN on what we called Universal Service 2.0 was, <clears throat> was um, or next generation universal service is really important because that says invest in that, those sorts of things, not just the wires and the cable. Thanks very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tim. I think we have uh, one minute left. Uh, Dr. Tim, do you have any short uh, final comment or recommendation, please? Uh, no, I think it, it's, this is a tremendous time and opportunity for Cambodia. Um, I, I think that, you know, you, as I mentioned in the presentation, think of this in two ways. Think of it as the high principles and then think of it as the really specific things that you want to get done. Because at the end of the day, you want to have that thing that, at the, that in that, you know, in November of 2022, you're going to be writing a report about all the wonderful things that were accomplished during your chair year. And if they're all, if, the, if, if it's all based on, you know, big ticket, you know, super duper statements about whatever, you won't have a whole lot to write about. If you, if you pick, uh, pick some very concrete, very achievable things and get them done, everyone will be proud and you will move the needle on ASEAN. And that's what's critical, to move the needle every year. And uh, the previous chairs have done that and I'm sure Cambodia will this time around. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Tim. Uh, we are now uh, running out of time. So to conclude, uh, I would like to thank Dr. Tim once again for your great presentation and uh, wonderful contribution to our webinar today. Thank you very much. And also I would like to thank all the participants for your active involvement and also kind attention to our session today. Uh, I wish everyone all the best. Stay safe and good luck. Over to you, Ms. Him. Thank you. On the ASEAN Economic Community, potential priority for Cambodia as the chair in 2022. So we will use English as a medium of communication in this panel again. And then may I now pass the floor and pass the mic to our moderator, Dr. Cheng Kam Long, the Vice President of ADI. Dr. Cheng Kam Long, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Ms. Uh, him and uh, first of all, let me start by thanking the Asian Vision Institute and the DKI and everyone involved in hosting and organizing this very important event, uh, focusing on ASEAN's economic community uh, and how Cambodia could benefit and prepare for uh, the ASEAN Chairmanship 2022. So. Uh, let me start uh, about pa uh, panel session two. We have about 60 minutes uh, to run this uh, session and the session will be divided into uh, two parts. The first part, I will invite three uh, prominent speakers uh, from the Ministry of uh, Commerce and then from the Chamber of Commerce and uh, from uh, the academia. So for the first part, I will invite the three speakers each to, to have around 20, uh, 10 minutes uh, to respond to uh, my questions. And of course, uh, uh, the panelists can choose not to answer my questions and they uh, can uh, provide related perspective and insights that relate to ASEAN economic community. The second part from 10.30, uh, the floor is open to the audience for questions. So may I remind the audience to uh, drop the questions in the question box, in the chat box, and then I will read the question for the pan panelists. So may I now invite the three uh, panelists uh, on board, and then the first is uh, His Excellency Do Dr. Uh, Riti Pitch. Uh, the second is uh, His Excellency uh, Mr. Manimal, and the third panelist is uh, uh, Dr. Lai uh, Sokheng. So may I now introduce uh, the first uh, panelist. Uh, it is our privilege and honor today to have the three prominent uh, panelists to join. His Excellency Dr. Riti Pitch is currently Secretary of State 
at the Ministry of Commerce, Cambodia. I think previously he has had uh, he, he had been serving as the ambassador and permanent representative of Cambodia to the WTO, uh, World Trade Organization, and the other international organizations, focusing particularly on the economic and trade areas in Geneva, Switzerland, as well as uh, he was serving as chair and coordinator of the LDC group in the WTO between 2017 and 2018. Since 1993, His Excellency had been serving in various leadership positions in the Ministry of Commerce, including being the Director General of the International Trade, in which he had also been serving as Cambodia lead for the ASEAN Senior Economic Officials meetings from 20, uh, 2003 to 2012. His Excellency Dr. Reti Pich so, uh, received a diploma in economics from uh, Handel uh, Scholz Schul Leipzig in Germany in 1988 and a doctor degree from the same university in Germany in 1992. So may I now uh, invite on board. And the second uh, panelist is uh, Excellency uh, Mr. Manimal. He is currently a Deputy Director General at the Cambodian Chamber of Commerce, CCC. And he also served as advisor to the Ministry of Commerce in, of Cambodia. Uh, His Excellency Mani Mool has been with the CCC for the past 11 years, and he has been working very actively and prominently in the area of uh, private sector uh, engagement in the ASEAN community. He has participated actively in private sector development and engaged with business community locally and internationally, such as uh, with the Asian Business Advisory Council, East Asia Business Council, GMS Business Council and International Business Association and Chamber of Commerce. Prior to his engagement with the Cambodian Chamber of Commerce, he had been working with uh, the US Embassy in Phnom Penh. He uh, joined the National Productivity Center of Cambodia at the Ministry of Industry, Mine and Energy uh, in 2004. So His Excellency Mani Mool graduated with Master of Business Administration from Panasastra University of Cambodia in 2013 and the Bachelor Degree of Business Administration from the National University of Management in 2004. The third and uh, last but not least uh, panelist is Dr. Lai Sokheng, is my uh, uh, friends and colleagues. Uh, Dr. Lai is currently a lecturer of applied economics to at the postgraduate levels at the Royal University of Phnom Penh. He received his Doctor of Philosophy in Economics from the University of Adelaide, Australia in 2018. His research interests include international economics, development economics, and applied economics. Dr. Sokheng has published several articles in regional and international journals and has won several essay competitions, including the Oxfam Essay Competition, Japan Fair Trade Commission Essay Contest, Toronto Center Essay Competition. So may I now invite all the panelists on board? And we begin our first part of this panel, which is the question from me to the three panelists. I think uh, we begin also by acknowledging uh, the contribution and the insight uh, shared by the previous speakers and uh, our honorable uh, guest at the first session. And also we acknowledge the damage caused by COVID-19 to the global uh, community at the time being. And then while Cambodia is preparing for the ASEAN Chairmanship 2022, we have, to, uh, we have suffered a lot. And hopefully uh, from this uh, panel session, I think we will uh, gain more insight on how to prepare uh, ourselves uh, you know, at the institutional level, at the national level, uh, gaining the insight from a uh, very experienced and a very uh, uh, 
scholarly uh, academicians. So let me begin, you know, uh, His Excellency Dr. Pichretti. I think Cambodia has attempted to benefit a lot from its chairmanship in 2022. But for Cambodia uh, and then for ASEAN as a whole, uh, what, what should ASEAN do in the region, you know, uh, in order to turn the ASEAN as a competitive des destination for uh, FDI and then to make it like a regional, a competitive regional hub for trade and supply chains amid this COVID-19 pandemic in preparation for, you know, the economic integration uh, by 2025. Thank you. The floor is your excellency. His Excellency, uh, Dr. Sopsipana, Chairman of uh, ABI, Rear Admiral Peter Uma Tao Tao, Director of uh, DKI APCSS, His Excellency Patrick Murphy, uh, US Ambassador to Cambodia. Excellency, fellow panelists, moderators, distinguished uh, 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 guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning and good afternoon, uh, wherever you are. It is my pleasure to be here with all of you this morning and to be invited to participate as one of the panelists today in this important uh, virtual webinar about Cambodia's aspiration for a successful ASEAN chairmanship uh, next year. And the economic community, which is uh, jointly organized by AVI and DKAPCSS. I would like to uh, go to answer the question. Uh, it is really a difficult difficult question, good question. And ASEAN, I, I am of you that ASEAN need to continue to take measure to contain, reduce, and control the infection in ASEAN member state through vaccination program and other health measure to open up the country for economic activity as much as possible in tourism, transport, construction, manufacturing, etc., and so on. ASEAN ought to speed up vaccination uh, across the region. Travel restriction would be much relaxed in the way that would enable the resumption of movement of natural person. Similar to other ASEAN member state, the government of Cambodia began its free of charge large scale vaccination campaign against COVID 19 for people from all work across the country, including diplomat officials, foreigners who reside in Cambodia. Currently, Cambodia managed to vaccinate almost 50% of the total targeted population, uh, 10 million people from 18 years old upward. And in Phnom Penh, 99.2% uh, of its population is vaccinated, uh, vaccinated by yesterday, except those with health issues. Cambodia will finish the vaccination, uh, finish vaccinating the targeted uh, population by the end of October, October this year. Other ASEAN member states are speeding up their vaccination campaign too. This is probably one of the most important steps toward ensuring the flow of FBI in the ASEAN region during the post, uh, during and uh, post COVID-19 pandemic. We need to do uh, trade and investment promotion about ASEAN attractiveness for FDI whenever possible. 
this promotion is very important for prospective investors to understand uh, situation in ASEAN by increased transparency of member states' investment rule, regulation, policy, and procedure through the publication of such in information in a regular basis, making such information widely available. Two, streamlining and speeding up the administrative procedure and requirement. Third, adoption of digital and internet technology for single window mechanism and one-stop service. Cambodia also joined other to ensure that cross-border trade will not get disrupted by the potential COVID-19 restriction measure, especially essential goods and foodstuff and pharmaceutical products and equipment. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much for your insight, Excellency. And then uh, we acknowledge and then uh, that, you know, disruptions have uh, been, uh, you know, going on and then uh, uh, your insight with particularly to uh, digital trade, digital connectivity in ASEAN and also regulatory governance and also the streamlining of all the, of those uh, practices is, uh, is very practical for the time being. And I'd like to link to the point Your Excellency just mentioned. Uh, and also uh, the speaker in the first session also mentioned slightly uh, with regard to SME development and digital uh, trade. Uh, for Cambodia, what are some of the potential opportunity Cambodia can uh, do more uh, to benefit Uh, from the digital trade and SME development uh, in ASEAN. And do you think this will be one of the key priority for uh, Cambodia, uh, you know, five years you know, from now or just uh, 10 years from now? Uh, thank you. I think, may I now invite uh, His Excellency Mani Mo. Uh, uh, His Excellency, from the private sector point of view, uh, uh, and with regard to your experience in the business community building in ASEAN and uh, internationally, uh, what uh, and how has the CC been doing uh, with regard to the promotion of business and investment? And uh, particularly with regard to ASEAN Business and Investment Summit that uh, is going to happen in the very near future. So uh, what will that contribute to the ASEAN economic uh, community building? Thank you, Dr. Over, over to uh, you, yes, please. My uh, respect to Excellency Dr. Pagliotti and all of the speakers for uh, sharing very insightful uh, information as well as experience on the Asian-related uh, topic and Asian economic community. Uh, for From the private sector viewpoint, uh, with regard to the realization of the Asian economic community, I think uh, so far uh, what, we, what is the challenge is that uh, Most of the member states, uh, they are uh, at different level of readiness, as well as the uh, commitment uh, to rely on. And they have different uh, law and regulation. So for the private sector uh, in ASEAN, uh, we have the ASEAN Business Advisory Council, uh, that is the dialogue partner for the ASEAN uh, leader. We uh, have been uh, doing a lot uh, in order to support the realization of the Asian um, community. So since the launching of the, uh, the program or the launching of this vision, uh, the Business Advisory Council always um, uh, like uh, submit the recommendation and uh, all of the challenges that the private sector face particularly some of the main challenges that we face uh, in regarding to this uh, kind of uh, uh, Asian economic 
community development, uh, we face with the threat facilitation problem. And we really raise a lot of uh, problem. And I think some of the issue have been uh, solved, some are still in place. So we regard to the uh, facilitation, um, uh, the private sector always uh, recommend as well as suggest the harmonization of a custom standard and also the removal of a non tariff barrier or non tariff measure and simplification of the custom process. I think this has been uh, uh, quite well. And uh, one of uh, the problem with the threat, facil threat facilitation at the border is that uh, the private sector would like to see the custom common control area where uh, the, the, the country the, who share the border, for example, like Cambodia and Vietnam, mm -hmm. both uh, custom authorities should set up the common control area where they could check all of the needed uh, documents as well as the cargo once only. So that it saves a lot of time and money for the private sector. So, and some of the other problem with the uh, threat, facilita threat facilitation is about the, the transit fee. Some, some of the country, they did not mention clearly uh, the transit fee. So I think uh, threat, facilitation, threat facilitation would be one of the concern of the private sector uh, in regard to the uh, Asian economy community. The other sector, that uh, is concerned, uh, just like the previous uh, speaker already mentioned, is the gap of the development for the micro, small, and medium enterprise. So this is very crucial to all of the Asian uh, country and even Cambodia. So, so far for the private sector, uh, like Cambodia Chamber of Commerce, as well as the um, ASEAN Business Advisory Council, we have put a lot of uh, effort in the development of the small and medium enterprise with regard to the financial support and uh, financial access, with regard to the technical support and as well as the linkage. Uh, we developed the legacy project that would uh, link the SME to the large uh, enterprise locally, as well as um, uh, linked to the foreign direct investment and international uh, company. So with that, a lot of uh, legacy projects in place like uh, Digital Connect, uh, like um, uh, Digital Park, or even a TVET program of the uh, country. And I think uh, with regard to uh, these <laughs> of the micro and medium enterprise as well as the threat facilitation. Every year uh, as a chair uh, of the, the ASEAN, the private sector would hold what we call uh, ASEAN Business and Investment Summit. This is very, very important uh, platform, a very important forum or summit that top leader from all over the world would attend this uh, summit. Uh, including the current chair, including the uh, like um, uh, the, uh, the big country like China or US would attend. And the, uh, the Asian business and uh, investment summit, uh, the private sector, uh, particularly the top business leader would attend and uh, join the dialogue with the top leader, with uh, the region leader and Asian leader to provide insight about the current situation of the business and the challenges, what uh, we need the support from the government. So that, that is one of the, the, uh, the, like, um, the benefit of the Asian Business and, and what, uh, Asian Business and uh, Investment Summit. And the other is that uh, we would also have the Asian Award that would uh, showcase or that would uh, acknowledge the contribution by the SME in the region and contribution by uh, the other enterprise, uh, they would help uh, to achieve uh, the A Asian economic community as well as the social uh, and society improvement. So I think uh, next year, uh, Cambodia Chamber of Commerce will be the host 
of the Asian uh, Business mm -hmm. and Investment Summit. And we uh, expect mm -hmm. as for the support from all of the stakeholders, from the Ministry of Commerce, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and all of the relevant ministry, as well as the um, the uh, the other relevant institution and policy maker to to actually uh, make uh, the best use of this uh, golden opportunity. So far, Cambodia Chamber of Commerce, we also work very close with the foreign embassy in Cambodia, as well as the International Chamber of Commerce in Cambodia and Business Association to really develop the customized uh, program that would benefit to the business community in Cambodia and that would uh, showcase the real potential of Cambodia and attract more business and uh, investor from all over uh, the world. And we try to develop a customized like uh, delegate book, uh, ADN as well as the uh, international delegate book that would provide them the up to date the and insightful information about investment in Cambodia, business opportunity and business community business community by each of the the uh, like uh, the country like the US, India, China, or from the European. So I think this is uh, what we have done so far, and I hope for the support from uh, all of the order. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Your Excellency. Uh, if I may wrap up your import, uh, some of the important points you mentioned. Uh, currently, trade facilitation has been an issue and then uh, is uh, being one of the priorities for Cambodia, for ASEAN uh, to improve on this part. And the second thing, the importance of building uh, the connection that is you call the linkages between SME, between small firms and big firms, between local firm in SME and then the large international firms overseas and also you know the international uh, institutional support from governments and then from other stakeholders i think this is a very important and then uh, may i uh, ask you to enlighten us a little bit more with regard to uh, the linkages and particularly the opening up of trade you know uh, of the region to the other larger mega markets like uh, the US, China, UK, the EU, Japan, Korea, for example. And currently, uh, what do you see as the main challenges or opportunity for ASEAN to improve and then to uh, uh, do more in order to integrate, uh, uh, you know, as a region, uh, where, and then in order to uh, address some of the barrier or uh, technical and non-technical to those mega markets. Thank you. I think uh, for Asian right now, each of the country try to uh, strengthen their their production uh, locally because because of the disrupt uh, disrupted supply chain. So somehow each of the country uh, they try to maintain their local capacity. Try to. Uh, enhance their local production. But at the same time, all of the Asian country, particularly the uh, manufacturing sector, they try to form up what we call Asian manufacturing uh, network that would uh, ally all of the Asian uh, uh, related manufacturer, each of the country. For Cambodia Chamber of Commerce, uh, for, for Cambodia, uh, the CCC, Cambodia Chamber of Commerce is part of the network. So we've been working uh, so hard to actually develop the ground rule for each of the of the member of the uh, the network to actually help each other to support the local production in each of the Asian country. So I think uh, this is one of the uh, the challenge and one of the opportunity that we can work together to actually uh, not to rely on uh, sole source of uh, supply or disrupted supply chain. Uh, with regard to the um, the mega uh, market like uh, US, uh, like uh, UK, uh, China, Japan, I think uh, for Cambodia, all of the market are very important. And um, I agree with the uh, ambassador of the United States that he mentioned that Cambodia 
and US is uh, the top trading partner together. So uh, for the private sector viewpoint, we really welcome uh, all of the market uh, around the world. And we, we are very thankful for the government to really uh, like open up for new market for the private sector. For example, recently, uh, the bilateral free trade agreement between Cambodia and China, as well as uh, Korea. I think it really opened up uh, for new market for the private sector. So for us, uh, we uh, somehow follow the uh, government uh, negotiation as well as the government policy, because some of the, the major, uh, the private sector could not deal alone. For example, like, uh, uh, fetal uh, sanit uh, sanitary agreement or something like that. That's that's the government level. As long as uh, both government agree upon each other, we can always follow it, and we can deal directly uh, with the the buyer and supplier uh, scheme. So for the the private sector viewpoint, I think all of the market uh, are really beneficial to us, and we are ready to work on it. And uh, the product uh, that we export to each of the market, uh, I think it would be differentiated. For example, like to the US, to the UK, or the European market, uh, we would export a lot in terms of garment and technology shoes. But for uh, China, we would export agriculture related uh, products, something like that. For, so, in conclusion, for the private sector, we, we really thankful for. Uh, any kind of opening up a market uh, for us. Thank you, Excellency, for your insight. And may I now turn to Dr. Lai Sokheng and uh, my apology for keeping you waiting. Uh, Dr. Lai, uh, I think the two panelists have touched on a number of very important points for Cambodia and as well as other ASEAN member states to do in order to deepen the integration and to fasten the integration. So Dr. Lai, uh, in, in, uh, with regard to uh, ASEAN, uh, you know, connectivity uh, master plan 2025, in which uh, they, there are five strategic areas uh, the first of which is sustainable infrastructure, second of which is digital innovation and connectivity. The third is seamless logistics. Regula the fourth is regulatory excellence. And then the fifth is people mobility. I would like to uh, ask uh, for your insight, uh, Dr. Lai, with regard to the digital connectivity in ASEAN. And uh, what are some of the things that Cambodia can, can do, uh, you know, to promote and uh, as well as to seamlessly integrate digitally uh, in ASEAN with regard to uh, ASEAN uh, digital economies integration and also uh, the fintech, for example, uh, fin financial technology industry in, in the process. Dr. Lai, the floor is yours. Hello. Can can you hear me? Yes, please. Okay. So, so uh, good morning, uh, His Excellency, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Chen, for the invitation, and also I would like to thank the ABI for inviting me to this uh, uh, wonderful event. I think it's a it's a timely event that uh, we are uh, preparing for the uh, chairmanship of the. Uh, ASEAN in uh, next year. So the topic for discussion today is quite relevant. So thank you for that. So uh, referring to the, the questions uh, about the digital economy, I think this is a very, very important and it is in line with the uh, policy uh, of the Royal Government of Cambodia. And I think uh, it is very, very uh, uh, useful in the sense that so to integrate our economy uh, into the region as well as the world, so we benefit for two things. So the first things uh, I would like to highlight here is about the trade integration. So mm -hmm. I think uh, His Excellency uh, Nimul has already uh, uh, 
uh, highlight a lot of uh, important point about a uh, 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 free trade integration. So how we can prepare for integrating ourselves into the, the region. So uh, he, he already mentioned a lot of points. So I would like to highlight a little bit uh, about trade integration here and uh, when we, how can we link this into our digital economy? So when we digitize our economy, so we, I think we already have the trade agreement, uh, multilateral and also at, at the moment, we also have a, a bilateral trade agreement. So uh, with, with this, so we would, we would benefit ourselves. For example, I think we have a, a lot of, uh, uh, trade agreement, for example, with the ASEAN, Australian, New Zealand free trade agreement. So ASEAN, India trade in goods and uh, uh, agreement. So we have ASEAN, uh, Korea, we have uh, ASEAN, Japan, and also recently we joined the ASAP as well. So these are quite useful for us. So the second point I would like to highlight is the financial integration and for this point, I think it's linked to the question asked from Dr. Chang about the digital, uh, digital economy. So when, when, we, uh, when we integrate our financial sector in, into the region, so uh, we would be able to uh, facilitate the, the trade, intra-trade, uh, ASEAN trade, as well as to increase the investment as well. Uh, so how will this uh, uh, digitalization uh, facilitate this trade agreement? So it will help, for example, in terms of uh, uh, payments, in terms of uh, remittance, because uh, when we integrate ourselves in, uh, in the region, so we need to, uh, Basically, we have a uh, trade integration, uh, which is uh, highly integrated, but for financial integration, so probably, you know, because of the difference uh, in the level of financial development among a country, ASEAN member. So, for example, uh, Singapore, they have very uh, high financial inclusion, uh, maybe Cambodian, Myanmar and Laos still have the low level of financial inclusion. So, in this case, we, we need to prepare ourselves with the infrastructure that we can integrate ourselves mm -hmm. in terms of a financial sector. So for example, a banks, a payment system, okay, in order to uh, further enhance in other areas. So uh, I think uh, Professor Tim already mentioned about the standardized uh, QR code, something like that. So I think this is very crucial because uh, uh, when we have trade with other countries, we also need to set tall. So it means, let's say in a simple word, we need to transfer money, we need to pay to the, the merchant. And so how we do that? So basically before we need to go to banks, we need to uh, uh, transfer money and it may take some uh, sometimes but by having or upgrading the payment and settlement system so which is the part of digital economy so I think a payment and settlement system is part of digital economy so it will help the merchant to fast uh, to increase the speed of uh, payment and settlement with the merchant easily Let's say we have trade with, with Thailand. So I think uh, with, with the standard die of QR code, so then people can make payment easily. So then like, for example, uh, we, we, we can send money or we can, uh, in other words, in terms of uh, a remittance, you know, we have a lot of workers, uh, a Cambodian worker in Thailand. So how do they send money back home? So I think it's, it's mm -hmm. very costly sometimes to send money back home uh, before because they need to send it through someone or through some agent and then the, the agent charge a very high fee. Okay, so then uh, in order to help this, in order to integrate ourselves into the region, so I think that 
developing a, a, a proper and a, a modern payment infrastructure would help uh, uh, Cambodia to integrate ourselves into the region uh, through the digital, uh, digital economy. So I, I'd like to stop here. Thank, thank you so much, Dr. Lai. I think do, uh, for, for your in, insight with regard to uh, digital connectivity and particularly the digitalization and digital transformation you know, of uh, process of ASEAN and uh, what Cambodia can do in the process. And uh, you, you touch on a, a key point is the e-payment and then the digital transfer of uh, money, for example. And this is part of the uh, process, you know, that could uh, potentially uh, benefit uh, everyone. So that's why we call the process of the inclusion. So not only looking at the macro level, but we also focus on the micro level. You know, I mean, people, workers, immigrant workers working overseas could also send and you know, uh, the trade, the digital trade that uh, is facilitated by the digital technologies in the process. And uh, let open the floor to the questions from the audience. So may I now uh, invite the audience to uh, drop their question in the drop box, in the chat box, yes. Uh, yes. Thank you so much. I think we have one question uh, from the audience from uh, Pisay Ratana uh, Sawan. The question is, uh, what are potential economic obstacles and problems Cambodia may have encountered during its ASEAN chairmanship in 2022? Uh, uh, may I... Uh, give this question to His Excellency, uh, Dr. Uh, Pich Riti, or, or uh, Dr. Lai, I mean, uh, can also touch on uh, this a little bit if you, uh, you could. So the question is, what are the potential economic obstacles and problems Cambodia may have encountered during its ASEAN chairmanship in 2022? Uh, Dr. Lai, if you are comfortable, uh, you can provide your insight. And also His Excellency, uh, Dr. Pichiretti. Maybe a few points. Over to you, please. Okay, uh, thank you for the question. It's a good question. Uh, just I, I would like, as uh, Dr. Tim, uh, Professor Tim already said, ASEAN economic uh, community was established since the end of uh, 2015. It is a major milestone in the regional economic integration agenda uh, in ASEAN and offering uh, opportunity in form of shoot market of uh, 2.6 trillion US dollar and uh, over 650 million people. And in 2014, uh, ASEAN economic community was a third large economy in Asia and seven uh, large economy in the world. Yeah, we have uh, accomplished a lot. However, uh, in my uh, personal, observation. I have noticed a couple, a couple of issues. Uh, first, the impact of uh, COVID-19 on social economic development as a key sector has been uh, long uh, disruption, such as trade, investment, and people mobility in the region. The uncertainty lead to a more government expenditure including stimulus and economic recovery program. 
uh, there are development gaps between and <coughs> within member in terms of income, human uh, capital, skill labor, institution, and uh, infrastructure, and so on. Uh, we know that there uh, is also uh, human resource development issue. It is but noting that disparity in demographic, demographic capacity, uh, that means uh, population growth, population aging, this result in labor deficit surpluses uh, among members, hence different level of productivity and economic uh, growth. This is uh, some uh, uh, obstacle and uh, difficulty during our chairmanship. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, His Excellency, uh, Dr. Pichretti, for your insight. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, looking forward to 2022, uh, given the rambling impact of COVID-19, and I do uh, uh, agree with uh, you know the point you mentioned that you know some of the obstacles we are facing, and uh, I think the government is trying to address some of those issues. Uh, may I now turn the floor to uh, Dr. Uh, Lai Sokheng? Would you like to add any points on this one? Yeah, so okay, so thank you for the questions, and uh, I think uh, in terms of obstacle. Yes, yeah, so we, we faced obstacles in the past as well, but uh, we could overcome this. As uh, everyone knows that uh, Cambodian joined ASEAN in 1999. And in 2002, after three years, so we chaired the ASEAN for the first time. And I think during that time, it was quite challenging because it's our first time. Uh, probably our resources is, uh, could be limited and mm -hmm. Yes, first time as a chair, there must be a lot of challenging. And of course, we could do it. And uh, 2012, we could make it again. So in terms of obstacle, uh, we still remain health, but I think we could still overcome it. Uh, one, one challenge that I would like to highlight here is not about Cambodia itself, but for the whole ASEAN as uh, the region as a whole. So uh, in terms of... Uh, uh, disparity and the diversity mm -hmm. in the region, like a previous speaker already mentioned about mm -hmm. the uh, populations, uh, mm -hmm. something like that. But one thing is about the disparity in development, the level of development, uh, the level of income. So uh, if, you, if you look at some member of ASEAN country, which is quite advanced, so quite developed, the income is so high, and some as, uh, other ASEAN country, for example, Cambodia. So probably our income is low and we have uh, some uh, 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 limitation in terms of uh, resources, especially human resources that could be uh, uh, our limitation. So I think it, it sometimes it's difficult uh, uh, to make things uh, all straight in uh, everything uh, together and put in one, so probably it, it may not fit all. For example, if we uh, endorse a theme or probably mm -hmm. action, so probably one may not fit all. So I think that's that there's things that we need to balance ourselves. Uh, and sometimes I, I think the main area of focus, probably, I think everyone for everyone, it must be true that it's about the post COVID 19 recovery, and uh, that's. Uh, a problem for all, but other problem, like for example, if we talk about uh, human resource development, so the level is not uh, uh, the same. Uh, Singapore probably high level uh, human capital mm -hmm. index. Uh, some other country, Cambodia, maybe remain a low human capital index. So, uh, in in coming up with any uh, 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 policy coming any uh, priority in terms of this, so probably it's difficult to balance. And mm -hmm. uh, that's why uh, uh, for us, we need to prepare uh, in advance what is the main priority for next year, what should be our theme uh, for next year uh, as uh, we are the chairman. So yes, that's, uh, I think that could be the challenge that uh, I think that's all from me, thanks. Thank you so much, Dr. Lai for your insight and then the, existing 
inequalities and existing dis discrepancies in terms of development level between ASEAN member states uh, is a highlight of uh, your, your, your talk. And uh, yeah, I think we have been, you know, as a ASEAN member state, we have been discussing about closing this development gap and also bringing the latecomers in ASEAN, you know, to join uh, fully in the integration process. But uh, we, we will talk and touch on more, more on this uh, later. We have uh, about 10 more minutes uh, before we end our uh, second uh, session. May I now uh, go to the, an another question? So from uh, one Watanak Kem, the question is, uh, how much has Cambodia prepared herself in terms of legal sector for this economic integration? And do Cambodia have enough human resources to deal with the foreign direct investment, especially in legal sector? Uh, His Excellency, uh, Mengni Mul, are you comfortable to share your insight on this, uh, on this question? Yes, uh, thank you for the question. So uh, for, from the uh, private sector viewpoint, I think this is very uh, good question regarding the legal sector. And so far, Cambodia Chamber of Commerce and uh, our counterpart, uh, some of our counterpart, particularly the uh, China Council for the Development of International Trade, we somehow also discuss on the cooperation on strengthening uh, legal related uh, professional skills or something like that. And uh, we think it is a very cru crucial part. And regarding the current status, uh, I, for, for me, I don't have uh, the actual data inside about the current status. But what I can share is that uh, from the Cambodia Chamber of Commerce, we, we work uh, very close with our foreign uh, uh, counterpart because they are the one who see the real need of the uh, human resource in specific sector. Uh, as well as the foreign uh, direct investment uh, related uh, human resource uh, skill. So uh, it is a common problem in Asian country uh, with regard to the human resource shortage, as well as the skill uh, labor, as well as the professional development. In case of Cambodia, uh, we actually work very close uh, with the, the company and enterprise uh, we obtain the insight from them of uh, what are the skills that is needed uh, for their uh, successful business, something like that. Cambodia Chamber of Commerce, we sign the MOU of cooperation with the higher, learn, higher education uh, uh, learning or with the university. We somehow try to bridge the gap between the real skill demand and what the university would uh, uh, provide education or would provide uh, the training. We also partner with our uh, like uh, foreign uh, company that actually uh, provide the training uh, needed in terms of human resource, in terms of digital marketing, in terms of fintech. So we realize that uh, those skills are very crucial uh, for the support industry development as well as to support the uh, foreign direct investment in Cambodia. Thank you. Thank you so much, Excellency. Uh, thank you for your insight. I think we have the next question uh, from Ms. Hamsutirot, our MC of the event today. She is also uh, interested in the national single window uh, for, uh, the, for Cambodia. So may I... Uh, uh, hand over this uh, question to His Excellency uh, Pichiretti. Uh, are you comfortable? If you are comfortable, uh, please share your insight and perspective on what do you think about the development of national single, single window in Cambodia? And what are the challenges and obstacles? What should be the positive impacts of the national single window? if we successfully integrate it. Over to you, Excellency. Uh, thank you, uh, 
for your question, uh, Mr. Sotiroa, uh, this is a uh, uh, good question. Uh, the national single window is uh, managed by uh, our uh, custom official. But as uh, an ASEAN official who work in this uh, uh, subject, uh, this on ASEAN economic cooperation, I know that uh, this is uh, very important to develop national single window in Cambodia and also to connect to ASEAN single uh, window. Yeah, this, uh, this is uh, very important to facilitate mm -hmm. trade because uh, when uh, uh, we issue uh, uh, certificate form B, to facilitate trade among ASEAN member states uh, to get the benefit from uh, ASEAN free trade area. So if uh, the certificate of origin comply with the rule of origin, I mean, uh, uh, you will get a zero percent tariff, uh, mm -hmm. no charge on the border when you import uh, the tariff to the country. And facilitation through uh, ASEAN single windows is very important. And therefore, uh, Cambodia developed the national single window uh, and also ready, already uh, in operation uh, to connect with uh, ASEAN single window. So this is uh, very uh, important to facilitate trade among ASEAN member states. Uh, because we exchange the, the certificate of origin through the uh, uh, ASEAN single window. And uh, custom official can look at the document, the certificate and the attached document and uh, be ready to uh, let the group uh, 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 go in the country when uh, it right at the border, so it's uh, faster to facilitate trade. Yeah, this is a very good uh, project. Uh, the challenge there is, uh, you know, with internet at the border, we have a long border with Vietnam, with uh, Thailand, and uh, sometimes the internet connection is not uh, so good, and uh, sometimes. Uh, uh, the trade is not uh, uh, 24 hour, yeah, uh, or seven day, yeah. Sometimes it's uh, not uh, uh, at every uh, international border between Cambodia and Thailand or Cambodia, Vietnam is uh, used, yeah. We have uh, like border with uh, in Kampong Saum and uh, uh, port in Phnom Penh and so on. Yeah. There, there are some uh, border checkpoint that function, uh, yeah, maybe a 24 hour, uh, seven day a week. Yeah. But some is not uh, like that. Yeah. And it is not only uh, the challenge and difficulty for Cambodia. Other ASEAN member states have the same uh, challenge and uh, difficulties. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. I answer all your questions. Thank you so much for your very insightful intervention on, on this point. And uh, yes, uh, ASEAN single window and a national single window is very key, uh, a very important element in uh, the process of the economic integration of ASEAN. And as Excellency um, highlighted, uh, I think Cambodia have achieved a lot. And I think because uh, of our time, let uh, me move to the last question and the question to each of the panelists. And could you please share your brief uh, insight uh, with regard to your recommendation for the government of Cambodia? Uh, what should Cambodian government do to prepare for the success in its uh, ASEAN Chairmanship 2022. 
maybe a very brief uh, few points. So starting from uh, Dr. Lai Sokheng and then to His Excellency May Nimul and then ended up by uh, His Excellency Pichirati. So the questions about uh, with regard to your recommendation for the government of Cambodia to, to prepare for a success uh, ASEAN Chairmanship 2022. The floor is your Dr. Lai. Okay, so yes, thank you very much for the, the questions uh, again. So again, uh, in order to prepare for the success, I think there are uh, several things, several inputs, including uh, the soft and hard point. So for the, hard, the hardware, what I refer to is the arrangement, physical arrangement. And I'm not sure whether next year uh, we will have the physical meeting in Phnom Penh or in Simbria or not, but uh, with a finger crossed that we could do this again because uh, uh, during the, the meeting, if uh, we could do this uh, in physical uh, meeting, I think we could benefit a lot. So first, uh, we could uh, invite all our friends from ASEAN, including uh, a minister, prime minister, and top government official from other country to come and uh, have a look again at our country. So after 10 years, so what, what has been changed from 2012 up to uh, 2022? So this is the things that we, uh, from the hardware side and from the software side, I think, uh, it is important that we mod mobilize resources that we have in order to uh, bring uh, input. So I think we need uh, a deliverable so for the meeting. So what, what I, I think uh, basically I, I believe that through this news, uh, uh, the relevant authority ministry has been uh, preparing themselves uh, in order uh, to provide input uh, and to uh, find a, a good a theme, deliverable, what kind of priority uh, for the meeting. I think uh, they already prepared this, but uh, I would just uh, recommend one thing is that uh, we could mobilize resources from uh, different think tank in order to come up with what kind of uh, uh, deliverable that we want to prepare. That's one thing I would recommend. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Lai, for your insight. And may I now move to uh, give the floor to His Excellency Many More uh, to share, uh, please. Yes, thank you. So for me, I think uh, um, the government have already uh, uh, prepared for the deliverable, uh, deliverable during the uh, chairmanship uh, 2022. So I think uh, we would expect that uh, some new initiative under the chairmanship of uh, Cambodia uh, would take place during the during that period of time. For uh, the private sector, uh, we uh, would like uh, to uh, request as well as suggest that uh, we should hold the business event uh, that would showcase the potential of uh, Cambodia and really attract the new um, investment as well as uh, business into the kingdom of Cambodia. Because I think uh, during the 2022, uh, a lot of top business leaders would uh, spotlight on Cambodia uh, development. And if the, uh, the situation allow, I think uh, if they could you know, actually visit Cambodia, that would be the best uh, scenario because uh, whenever they visit Cambodia, they would realize the true potential of Cambodia and uh, they would know where to invest. So for, for us, I think uh, uh, in terms of the, the achievement, in terms of the, the result from the Asian summit, uh, more investment, more trade, more uh, tourists, uh, more business would be beneficial to the society, beneficial to the private sector. So I would uh, suggest that um, uh, the private sector and uh, the government, uh, we should work uh, really close uh, with each other and keep the dialogue mechanism uh, to actually support each other and uh, make a really, really good business and investment related event. Thank you. Thank you so much, Excellency, for your insight. And may I now give the floor to His Excellency uh, Pichirati uh, for your insight. Excellency, the floor is you. Yes, uh, thank you for your question. It's a really interesting question. 
So you uh, may remember Professor uh, Tim Gura about the structure of ASEAN. You have ASEAN Summit, you have initial meeting, you have uh, uh, ASEAN Senior Official Meeting. So this is uh, the structure. And uh, we have the support of ASEAN Secretariat. So for us to uh, have a successful ASEAN uh, Cambodia ASEAN Chairmanship next year. We work with ASEAN Secretariat. Uh, the ASEAN Secretariat is the yeah the main uh, yeah organization that know everything about uh, what ASEAN have done, what ASEAN is going to do. Because we have uh, uh, AEC blueprint twenty fifteen and twenty now we implementing. Uh, AEC group in uh, 2025. And for Cambodia, uh, we work with ASEAN Secretariat. We work with our inter uh, 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 ministry in our country before we have hopeful point in those ministry attending uh, those uh, senior official meeting, attending uh, ministerial meeting, and they have their work plan uh, as a uh, Professor Tim Bora uh, said, uh, we have uh, a work plan uh, for uh, each sector. And uh, we have to look at it, the bigger one, and we look at the, uh, the smaller one, also important, and where we can do in 2022. Yeah, 2022. Because uh, it's a continuing process. We cannot do everything uh, by Cambodia alone in one year. It's a process uh, for many years and need the participation of also uh, ASEAN, other ASEAN member states. If we have uh, picked the priority for economic delivery for Cambodia next year, we need also support from other ASEAN member states to be successful. That is uh, our approach to have a successful ASEAN uh, Cambodia Chairmanship, uh, Cambodia ASEAN Chairmanship next year. Uh, thank you. Very much appreciate, uh, appreciated for your insight, Excellency, and uh, thank you so much. May I now wrap up briefly uh, from the, our key uh, prominent uh, panelists. So we, we, the Cambodian government should be working together with the ASEAN Secretariat, ASEAN member states, in uh, the governmental agencies uh, across the board. And then keep the dialogue open, government work with the private sector, and also government brings in think tanks, uh, you know, uh, to work together to, uh, you know, uh, pro conduct some analysis and to share insight. Uh, in the preparation for the success of ASEAN 2022. And uh, we have had a very productive, very engaging and illuminating discussion in this uh, panel, panel two. And I would like to thank uh, the panelists uh, for your valuable time and for your uh, you know, uh, passion to share uh, the insight at this ses session. And I would like to thank the audience for your questions and my apologies for not being able to have all your questions addressed. And I think we will find more time to uh, discuss on these uh, issues later. May I now uh, give the floor back to our MC. Uh, yeah, Ms. Him, you. thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kim Long. And first of all, I would like to thank His Excellency, Dr. Peter T, His Excellency, Mr. Mani Mol, and Dr. Sokhei for the fruitful discussion and in-depth clarification on some specific matter. And I believe that the discussion today offer potential room and preparation for Cambodia uh, for our upcoming ASEAN Chairmanship in 2022. And also I wish to thank Dr. Tim Long for your comprehensive and critical question to our three panelists today as well, as well as our audience. So Excellency, Honorable Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, we have now come almost come to an end of our webinar, but uh, before concluding the webinar, 
may I now invite the Brigadier General Jem Hirai, the Deputy Director of DKI APCSS, to deliver his closing remark. So, Brigadier General, the floor is yours. Thank you, Ms. Hiem. Can you see and hear me okay? Okay, so the main, yes. main thing you can hear me, uh, if you can't see me, you're not missing very much. But thank you very much for that kind introduction. And, and, and thank you, Ms. Hiem, for a terrific job as the MC and keeping everything flowing. Terrific. Um, on behalf of our director, Peter Gumatautau, and the entire Daniel K. Inoue Asia Pacific Center for Security Studies team, uh, it's my privilege to, to uh, thank first off AVI President, uh, Dr. Chang Vanarith for partnering with us and uh, conducting these series of, of webinars. Uh, I, I commend AVI, as do I think all the participants, uh, for such a wonderful job hosting this webinar. Uh, and for the distinguished panelists that were uh, already recognized, uh, thank you very much for sharing your insights and your expertise. And I agree, you shared pragmatic advice with passion. And that was just terrific and very encouraging. To, to hear. And to all the participants from across the Cambodian government and from your partners uh, and from civil society, uh, thank you very much for investing your time in this very important endeavor. And the, the listening, the sharing, the learning uh, contributed, I think, to the preparations that are well underway for Cambodia's leadership in next year's uh, ASEAN chair. Uh, and I, I, I really commend the active chat as well. So that, that was uh, very encouraging to, uh, to see that the kinds of questions that were being asked were so insightful. Uh, and, and I think will result in a very, very helpful to this process. So as we've heard today, the economic challenges confronting ASEAN are indeed many and varied. But there are also lots of opportunities for Cambodia uh, that, that Cambodia is, is aiming to grasp, to distinguish itself uh, as the ASEAN leader in this, in this next year. And we at DKI APCSS, and, and if I could boldly also speak for Ambassador Murphy, we are confident that Cambodia will rise to the challenge and steer ASEAN safely and successfully to a stronger uh, economic community. And so for all who wish ASEAN well, which includes the United States, uh, we stand ready to support Cambodia in this very important role. And, and I would be remiss if I did not highlight uh, AVI Chairman uh, Dr. Uh, Stuxifana's challenge to us at the beginning, where he says, hey, we need to prepare and to partner. And it is evidence that the preparations and the partnering are in fact happening, the aggressive. And one of the items that he highlighted was the fourth industrial revolution. And many of the discussions uh, to include uh, Ambassador Patrick Murphy mentioned the importance uh, of, of, the, uh, of the digital economy as was highlighted by commend all of you, congratulate all the participants for this. Uh, I, I will repeat the, the adjective because I think it's appropriate, this illuminating opportunity uh, for Cambodia as the uh, ASEAN chair in 2020. It's an honor for our center in, in, in a small way, the DKI APCSS to assist in these discussions. And we look forward to continuing partnering with AVI, particularly with the final seminar coming up in about a month on the ASEAN social cultural community and Cambodia's potential priorities in this another very important area. So to everybody, mahalo, which is thank you and aloha. So I thank Brigadier General for your insightful remark. And thank you for, uh, for the cooperation from DKI as well. So last but not least, may I now invite Dr. Chim Vanarat, the president of Asian Vision Institute or AVI to deliver his closing remark. Yeah, Doctor, the floor is yours. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Satira. First of all, aloha to colleagues, friends, uh, 
across the Asia Pacific. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to uh, register my deep gratitude, my heartfelt gratitude to Excellency Dr. Sokthipana, Chairman of AVI, Rear Admiral uh, Kumar Tatao, uh, Director of uh, DKI APCSS, Ambassador Patrick Murphy, uh, Professor Tim, uh, uh, Excellency Dr. Pigretti, Excellency Mr. Uh, May Nimol, Dr. Lai Sokeng, and our moderators, uh, Dr. Chen Kim Long and Lim Ming Huo, and special thanks to Him Skirat, our great moderator, and the team that work behind the scenes uh, are really grateful uh, for your support and your love uh, to this project. And uh, uh, frankly, uh, we ABI together with uh, DKI APCX, we, we work in, in a spirit of Ohana. Uh, it's kind of a, a family spirit uh, with a mutual respect, a mutual understanding and trust and uh, love uh, for, uh, you know, and, and compassion for to support uh, Cambodia Championship 2022. Uh, as Ambassador Patrick Murphy uh, stressed that the success of Cambodia is the success of ASEAN and the success of all the dialogue partners of ASEAN uh, who believe in multilateralism, who believe in international cooperation and partnership. As we are facing mountain challenges caused by uh, a myriad of global issues from pandemic to climate crisis, uh, inequality, uh, and so on. Uh, the only solution to this global issue is through cooperation and partnership. So that is the spirit that we adhere to and we have faith in international cooperation uh, in order for us to navigate through these challenges together. And um, I think to conclude here, uh, a lot has been said with regards to the challenges as far as the opportunities Cambodia are uh, going to face and to uh, kind of to take uh, when it chair ASEAN uh, next year. Uh, remember that our survey at the, our first seminar, uh, our overwhelming uh, number of participants have strong trust and confidence in the Cambodian chairmanship. So that is an uh, expectation we have to the Cambodian government. And I think the Cambodian government will be able to deliver results and meet the expectation that we have. Uh, and trust and confidence that also matter uh, for Cambodia to, to lead uh, and navigate ASEAN, especially come to the comprehensive recovery of ASEAN in the post pandemic. So thank you very much to all distinguished panelists, uh, guest speakers and participants for your support and for especially for holding a Ohana spirit, a family spirit. Thank you. So thank you, Dr. Ching Wanarat and Excellencies, honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen. We have now come to an end of the webinar. On behalf of the ABI and DKI APCSS, I wish to thank Excellency, Honorable Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen for your kind participation in our webinar today. We wish you good luck, good health and stay safe from the COVID-19. Thank you and you may leave the room now. Thank you.